Sunshine Network proudly presents University of Miami Hurricanes football. Third-ranked Miami has won 52 games in a row here at the Orange Bowl. Today should be little more than a tune-up for next Saturday's showdown in Tallahassee against top-ranked Florida State. It's the 3-0 Miami Hurricanes against the 3-1 Eagles of Georgia Southern. They're a powerhouse in Division I AA and the pride of Statesboro, Georgia. Hello again, everybody. Eric Reed, along with former Miami Dolphin great Nat Moore. Now, for the Miami Hurricanes, it is always about winning a national championship. And last week, the Hurricanes kept those title aspirations alive. They hurdled their first major obstacle with a huge road win, Nat, at Colorado. Yeah, they went into Boulder, Colorado, and played a top-10 team and really dominated for three quarters. And here you see... Because they allowed him to get back in the ball game in the last nine minutes, you see C.J. Richardson making a great play here to save the victory so that Miami could go on undefeated and look forward to this week's game. Big offensive showing last weekend for the Hurricanes. They ring up 35 points, 482 yards of offense. And Frank Costa, the quarterback, there are a couple of touchdowns. Nat Costa appears to be getting better by the week. He's getting better. He's a quarterback that's got a good, strong arm and, you know, Earlier during the year, he struggled a little bit, but here you see a clip where he goes back, he pops, and then he hits Chris Jones for the touchdown, and he's doing a good job of leading this football team. One of the biggest surprises in college football thus far plays middle linebacker for Miami, true freshman Ray Lewis. Well, Ray Lewis is a kid that someone forgot to tell him he's a freshman. He doesn't know he's a freshman. As we see him running through here, coming through the hole, making a big tackle for a loss on third down. Ray Lewis with 17 tackles in his first start last weekend at Colorado. Let's talk about the visitors, Nat. Georgia Southern comes out of Statesboro, Georgia, and Division I-AA. They're ranked eighth in the country this year. Their lone loss came at top-ranked Marshall. But Nat, like Miami, this Georgia Southern program is steeped in tradition. They're, they've got a lot of tradition. They've won four national championships, and they're used to playing for national championships similar to the University of Miami. And under Coach Stower, Stower they've won two, one national championship, and they feel that this is their year to get back to that national championship fight. Tim Stowers, just 35 years old, brings an exciting option offense with him to the Orange Bowl. Nat, get us ready. What do we face today with Georgia Southern's option? It's a very screwy offense. It's, the, it's called the flex bone, and here you see where they use the quick motion to get in good position, but the number one key is the fullback. All option teams, the fullback is the first, first option. And let's talk defense, because Georgia Southern's scheme is similar to the Hurricane and they have a tackle that could probably play here in Alex Mash. Yeah, they've got a great tackle that's uh, got five and a half sacks, and as we saw in that last clip, he has the tendency of jumping around the center and getting to the quarterback. He must play well for this defense to have a chance against the Hurricanes today. It's warm upstairs, even hotter downstairs, where our colleague Joe Rose is standing by with his pregame report. Eric and Nat, you hit that right on the head. It is a warm one here at the Orange Bowl today. By the way, we're expecting a crowd of around 42,000 for the Georgia Southern University of Miami football game. I talked to Dennis Erickson just a couple of minutes ago. A big concern. They've been watching that Florida State game. Possibly a letdown today. They know, of course, they'll be playing each other next week, next Saturday. On the other side of the ball, Georgia Southern comes in. Tim Stower says, hey, let's go out and have fun, play hard, and let's collect $180,000 for the university. So that's where they're coming from. It should be a fun one to watch today. All right, thanks very much, Joe Rose. It would take a perfect outing for Georgia Southern, but it's their opportunity of a lifetime here at the beautiful Orange Bowl. They'll tangle with Miami next on Sunshine Network. Today's Miami Hurricanes football game is being brought to you by Coors Extra Gold. When you're thirsty for real beer flavor, set your sights on the gold. Coors Extra Gold. No doubt about it, beer is back. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Nothing quenches that deep down body thirst better than Gatorade. And by the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant, where all the best of Italy is yours. afternoon in Miami and just another day at the office for the Hurricanes who come steaming into the Orange Bowl with a record of 3-0 and a home winning streak of 52 consecutive. Nobody's beaten them here since the season opener back in 1985. Miami Hurricanes have been dominant in their own ballpark. 
And this afternoon's meeting with Georgia Southern, the fourth all-time between these squads. They haven't met, though, since the October afternoon in 1937. Just a moment ago, the captains met at midfield. Miami won the toss. They deferred and will get the ball to start the second half, but they will kick it away to begin the first. And just moments ago, when the captains did meet, Miami again shaking hands and acting like perfect gentlemen. Good sign, good sign. Well, that's what young men should uh, be all about in college football. It's all just having a good time on Saturday. We're just about set for kickoff here at the Orange Bowl. Weekend number four for the 93 Miami Hurricanes. Scott Barnwell, the senior from Hollywood, Florida, kicking it to Georgia Southern's Chris Wright, three deep in the end zone, touchback. And it'll be first and 10 at the 20 for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Eagles ball on their 20 yards. Georgia line. Southern yeah. coming off a huge win at home last weekend, 45 to nothing. They blank Tennessee Chattanooga. So we will get our first look at this Georgia Southern offensive group. We have a split crew today, the Big East and the Southern Conference. Our referee is Al Hines. I think we're going to get a re-kick here, Eric. Uh, they're bringing a the kicking team back on. So again, Barnwell will tee it up. Chris Wright will drop back as the solo kick returner. And Barnwell has really been a weapon for Miami. Six of his last nine kickoffs have either gone through the end zone or have been a touchback. There's Tim Stowers. Got the head coaching job at Georgia Southern four years ago at the age of 31. And like Dennis Erickson, won a national championship in his first year at Georgia Southern. There is Dennis Erickson. He got his first coaching job when he was only 33 years old. Today he looks for his 48th win as the coach of the Hurricanes. He is 47 and 4. And there is Scott Barnwell, the fifth year senior out of Hollywood, Florida. Chris Wright, a junior from Valdosta, Georgia. And we're underway again. And again, Wright backing up this time seven yards deep into the end zone. So the Georgia transfer, Joe Dupree, and his Georgia Southern option offense. Take the Orange Bowl turf first. There is Dupree, a junior out of Macon, Georgia. As you can see, throwing the football, not his forte, just 35%. But he is very tricky with the football running that option. He's a magician with that option. And uh, he's the guy that uh, really makes that offense go. And you know, we get a good look at it as they come out and said that Joe Dupree is the guy on the bubble today. Lone setback, the fullback, James Williams. But here's the pitch to Chris Wright. Good block. Gets nine yards to the 29-yard line. Brought down by Twan Russell, freshman outside linebacker, starting for the injured Corwin Francis today. So a nine-yard pickup on first down. James Williams, the leading ball carrier at fullback, Wright and Fraley, both very quick. And Dexter Dawson, two touchdowns last week. He's their big play threat. IU, but left guard has started 41 in a row. sophomore outside linebacker. Marley darting in, Marley and they'll lose a few. Two-yard loss will bring up a third down and three. Rohan Marley last week in the mile-high altitude of Boulder played all 85 snaps on defense. Dwayne Johnson today at right tackle for the injured Warren Sapp. Russell and Lewis, both freshmen, stepping in because of injuries. And Dexter Siegler, one of the best cornerbacks in America. He's already picked off three footballs. First, third down for Georgia Southern, third and three. Dupree going to keep it. Good block, first down. Joe Dupree reads his blockers well. Got a great block, picked up 11, and Georgia Southern moves the chains. They're doing a good job. They're showing a, a formation that usually you see down around the goal line, but they were using a tight end. They came out, instead of going with the two wides and the two slot backs, they're going tight end and uh, two slot backs. And here you see he's coming out on the option, 
He's got plenty of blockers out front, and there's no one there to take him. As you see, Joe Dupree comes around, and Dexter Dawson out front trying to get a block. Excellent block by Shafton Fraley, number 12. He rolled right over Ray Lewis. Just underway, first and 10 for Georgia Southern, their own 38-yard line. Dupree has it, keeps it, and goes down. Darren Cryan stopped him at the line of scrimmage with an assist from Ray Lewis. Joe Dupree is an interesting story. Matt, how about your keys to winning for Georgia Southern? Well, the big thing is that they've got to execute. They've got to stay away from the turnovers. Any team that runs an option usually puts the ball on the ground. And more so than anything else, they've got to come after that University of Miami uh, football team on defense. There's Tim Stowers, longtime assistant to the founding father of football at Georgia Southern, Irk Russell. Dupree going to throw on second and nine. And misses Chris Wright. Covered well by the strong safety Carl Richardson. Joe Dupree, starting quarterback for Georgia Southern, was named the starter just a few days after the spring game last spring. Beat out two-year starter Charles Bostick. Here you see one of the wrinkles here, uh, Eric, where he comes out on the option. It's the option pass. But the, the reason that he has such a low efficiency is because he never gets a chance to set his feet. That's the only thing about being an option quarterback is that when you're trying to throw the football, you don't really have good fundamentals. Dupree would rather run it than throw it. Has two touchdowns throwing, two touchdowns rushing. This is third and nine. Plenty of time for Dupree. Nearly picked off. Excellent close by Dexter Siegler. Now you see why he's nicknamed ABC, America's best cornerback he broke it up intended for Dexter Dawson well I don't know if he's America's best but he's one of them and you know there you saw him just set on that out route and did good job but once the ball is in the air breaking on the football came close to coming up with another pick well that Georgia Southern picks up one first down but they'll punt it here on fourth and nine here's Jonathan Harris the junior from Houston a Georgia Southern punter Bill Thatcher did a good job to just get it away one bounce not much room for Jonathan Harris stop at the 24 just shy of the 25 yard line 38 yard punt three yard return no score at the Orange Bowl between the Hurricanes and the Eagles of Georgia Southern still will lead the Hurricanes on offense he is the junior quarterback from Philadelphia completing 55 percent of his throws so far Two touchdowns at Colorado, and he really spread it around well, Matt Moore, through to nine different receivers in the 35-29 win at Colorado. That's how you keep an offense happy. You know, everybody gets their shot at catching the football and being a part of the, the win, and that's what he's done a good job. You know, quarterback that's this young, he's only in his third start as a uh, junior this year, so he's got a lot of work to do, but I tell you what, he's the guy that can lead him to that victory. This team reminds me a lot of the 1986 team where they've got balanced running with those two big backs as well as uh, a quarterback that can get the ball down the field and a great offensive line, as you see the offensive line here. Donnell Bennett, who had 124 yards rushing at Colorado last week, gets it on first and 10. And Bennett straight ahead to the 30-yard line. And by Alton hits him, the safety, and Nick Davis, the strong side linebacker. Alex Mash, the standout, five and a half sacks already. Middle linebacker Paul Carroll is their leading tackler. And in the secondary, Rob Stockton, very heady player. No question, the linebackers, the strength of Georgia Southern's defense. Pick up a five on first down. And there is Alex Mash, who goes 6'2", 264 pounds. He's a senior. On second and five, Larry Jones takes his turn. Lost the football. Had the first down, lost the football. Georgia Southern has recovered. So the Hurricanes turn it over on their first possession. 11.49 to play, first quarter. And the folks from Statesboro, Georgia, with something to cheer about. Well, they've got to be happy here. This is an unforced error where Larry Jones come through. He's, they're running a, an option. or so, As you look at your screen, you'll see Larry Jones where they fake one way and it comes back on the backside. And he just runs through there, and the ball hits on his own hip and comes out. This unforced error, and Georgia Southern gets a big break and an opportunity to capitalize on good field position. Darius Dawson, the senior linebacker from Moultrie, Georgia, picked up the fumble. And that's first and ten for Georgia Southern. Early moments, first quarter, they have it at the Miami 37. Hit back option. 
and well overthrown. Chris Wright aiming it down the right sideline for Dexter Dawson. Not even close. Not even close, but Eric, the one thing that you saw from the Hurricane defense where they're expecting these kind of things, Terrace Harris was rolling over, and he was in good position to make the play. Tim Stowers with a record of 29 and 12 as the fourth-year head coach at Georgia Southern. 1980 graduate of Auburn. Second and 10. Joe Dupree with a lone setback, James Williams. Here's the pitch to Chris Wright. And Wright broke down at the 31 by Twan Russell. There is a penalty flag down. And looks to be a legal motion against the offense of Georgia Southern. Illegal shift. Two men in motion. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So now for the first time in this young football season, Miami fails to score a touchdown on its opening possession. Now that's something that you don't expect, especially against the Georgia Southern, but you know, when you have an unforced error, the other team did not stop you. You stopped yourself, and uh, the play we just saw on our screen was a, was an excellent running play, but once again, uh, the young team comes in, they're a little over inches, they got two people moving, and uh, they just call back. Took away a big play. One setback, four wideouts on second and 15. And this is the fullback, James Williams, straight ahead. Just a couple down inside the 38. Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker. And number 71, Kenny Lopez, the fifth-year senior from Key West, Florida. In on the stop of Williams. Lopez playing hard, playing well for Miami. Didn't begin playing football till his junior year in high school. He's really come on for Miami. Yeah, he, the folks down in Key West got to be real proud of Kenny. He's, he's an excellent uh, football player, and who knows, one day we'll see him uh, in pros. Third down 11 for Joe Dupree in his Georgia Southern option offense. Flag down again, and Dupree overshoots his man, Shafton Fraley, running the down and out left corner. And again, illegal motion against Georgia Southern. This is a Georgia Southern team averaging 317 yards of offense a game, 243 of them offense. by the rush. Decline, fourth down. Well, the Canes decline, fourth and 11, for the Eagles with 10.35 left in a scoreless first quarter. But the defense is just doing a great job of taking away the run and forcing them to throw the football, which is something Georgia Southern does not like to do, and they haven't had a lot of success this year, and as long as Miami can do that, they'll be victorious today, I think. Nobody deep for Miami. They may be anticipating a fake. Hometown fellow Bill Thatcher from Statesboro, Georgia, puts his right foot into it, hangs it high. But into the end zone, touchback hurricane. First and 10 Miami from the 20, scoreless here in the first quarter. Back to the Orange Bowl right after this. Bring it down, bring it down. Now yeah, part of the fun of Miami Hurricanes football, the tailgating parties outside before the game. You stop off at one, Nat? This has always been the thing that I enjoy about college football. The fans come out prior to the ball game and they just have a good time. Uh, having food and, and uh, bread breaking with the friends and family. So, you know, this is what college football is all about. I was fortunate enough to play college football, but pro football was great, but nothing beats the intensity and the fun that you have playing college ball. That's Nat Moore, played collegiately at Florida in the NFL for the Miami Dolphins. I'm Eric Reed, Joe Rose down on the field for us. This is Miami's second possession of the football game. We're scoreless, and it's first and 10 for the Hurricanes. Harris makes the catch, goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Costa to Harris, 23 yards, first down Miami. Jonathan Harris, been a quiet start, just six catches through the first three weeks, but a big grab for the junior out of Houston, Texas. As, as we go back and look at this instant replay, you just, this is just an excellent throw by Frank Costa as he gets it over the defender and hits Jonathan Harris for the big gain. Excellent throw and catch. Yeah, that's the book on Frank Costa. Tough young man with a very strong right arm. From the 42, Donnell Bennett, the lone setback. Costa looking. Overshot his man just a bit. Dietrich Clausel, the tight end. Had it in his hands, but the junior from Gulfport, Mississippi, could not hold on. A tough pass to handle, but uh, was catchable. He, he could have came down with that one. 
Well, you see what Miami accomplished on their opening drive. First three Saturdays. Not today. Miami has established an offense, though, that could move the football. Five, actually, uh, five of their ten touchdown drives have been over 80 yards. Seven have been 70 yards plus. From the run, 42, second and ten. Lots of running room for Donnell Bennett. Away from Darius Dawson. Check it, that's Larry Jones, who turned it up to the 47-yard line. Five-yard gain. That's what you like to see. A young guy makes, makes a mistake, and they come right back to him. They give Larry Jones the ball off tackle, and he tries to make up for that first error. Let's go to Dennis Erickson's comments about this game today. Georgia Southern is a great 1AA team. They won a national championship a number of years. They've got great athletes, and we're going to have to be prepared. Uh, we can't look ahead to Florida State. We've got to concentrate and really focus on Georgia Southern. From the 47-yard line, third down and six for Frank Costa. Five receivers out, and he finds one of them, Jonathan Harris, for the first down. Harris, down the sideline he goes. Great bit of running for Jonathan Harris, advancing it to the Georgia Southern 38-yard line. 23-yard pickup. Here in the first quarter, it's been the Costa and Harris show. Good, tough running by this 165-pound junior. He does a great job of getting open, catching the football, and then belling back, breaking tackles. Usually, as a coach, you say you don't want to see your receiver do this, but you know he's trying to get the big play, and here you see breaks one, breaks two, breaks three tackles, and then he's off and down the sideline. Great running by Jonathan Harris. Talk about spreading out the defense. Five receivers on that last pattern. Costa shot it too high for Chris Jones. Covered well by the free safety, Alton Hitson. On that particular play, Eric, uh, Alex Mash did a good job of getting penetration, getting in there, and uh, basically hitting Costa just as he was throwing the football. Nat, these are your keys to winning. Miami fumbling on their first possession. Now that's what Miami's got to stay away from, and they've got to continue to run the football, and on defense, they've got to be able to stop Georgia Southern's fullback. First time we've seen two backs for Miami. Second down, 10 from the Georgia Southern 30. Costa, under the rush, finds Saeed Tucker down at the 15-yard line. Wrapped up immediately by Rob Stockton, but a 15-yard pickup for Miami. They move the chains again. Costa is doing a good job of staying in the pocket. He took a big shot just then as he released the football, but was able to stay in there and get the ball downfield to Cy Tucker. And uh, that's why I say this young guy is coming of age. He's doing all the right things, and he's holding the football until the guy comes free. Just under nine minutes left in this scoreless first quarter. Marcus Wimberly, bottom of your picture, has a wideout. I set for Costa on first and ten. This is Donnell Bennett. On a bounce outside and cannot get by. The corner, Sean Austin, the senior from Thomasville, Georgia, with a nice ankle top tackle. That's a loss of two. This is a Georgia Southern defense net at their level, 1AA, they've been dominant. Well, we, we're very fortunate here, even though we've got uh, 1A and uh, AA, you've got two teams that are, are very quality teams at, the, at their particular division. Now down second and 12, a little high for Jonathan Harris, through his hands, incomplete. A moment ago, we saw A.C. Tellison come off, and he is being tended to at the Miami sideline. Here you see Costas dropping back, trying to get the ball to Jonathan Harris again. But, you know, in talking with Coach Starr yesterday, the one thing that he said, that they were a mirror of the Hurricane football team, and there you see them coming up, putting a hat on, on Miami's receivers. They will hit you. There's Tellison, the wide receiver for Miami, getting his left ankle retaken. Third down, 12 for Miami. Frank Costa out of the shotgun. He's already hit on three of six for 62 yards. from Fort Myers let one get away. That was just a freshman mistake, Eric. You know, Jamie German is one of those guys that, you know, he's so excited and he just tries to run with the football before he catches it here and he does the juggling act, but, you know, there, as you see, he took his eyes off the football and started to run. 
He's got to be patient, catch the football, tuck it away, and then run. This will be a 34-yard field goal attempt for Dane Pruitt out of a hold of punter Mike Chrissy. Pruitt, three for three on the year, and all three have come from 40 yards out or more. And he drills it. A 34-yard field goal for the sophomore Dane Pruitt out of Birmingham, Alabama. And the Hurricanes put points on the board. 7.40 left, first quarter. Three to nothing, Miami here at the Orange Bowl. Three-yard field goal for Dane Pruitt as the Hurricanes on the scoreboard with 7.40 left first quarter. With Nat Moore, Eric Reed, delighted to be with you, our Sunshine Network crew, on a very warm and pretty afternoon at the Orange Bowl here in Miami. Slight breeze coming in the open end. There's Chris Wright, solo kick returner, waiting the boot from Scott Barnwell. That drive for Miami, 10 plays, 64 yards. A couple of big Jonathan Harris catches to keep it going. And again, Barnwell booming it deep into the end zone. Touchback and a first and 10 for Georgia Southern at their own 20. Let's go downstairs, Joe Rose standing by. Thank you very much, Eric. Talking to the coaching staff the University of Miami, they talked about the importance of getting off to a great start in this game, taking a big league and allowing some of their second team guys to come in, get some experience and still rest your starters looking ahead to that Florida State game next week. Thanks, Joe. One player, Dennis Erickson, will probably rest. The remainder of this day is fine wide receiver out of Bay City, Texas, A.C. Tellison. Sprained left ankle, doubtful to return. On first down, Dupree on the pitch to Chris Wright. He can't rip away from Rohan Marley or Terrace Harris. And both those players had big-time outings last week at Colorado. Harris had 15 tackles, and in the altitude, Marley able to play all 85 snaps on defense. There's the 64-yard drive for the Hurricanes, and the kicking game, not a concern for Dennis Erickson. Dane Pruitt has been like money in the bank. An automatic. You know, he started out last year, uh, had a couple of tough first ball games, and then after that, he was just, uh, he's been unbelievable. Seven minutes to play, first period. Three to nothing, Miami. Dupree gives it off to his fullback. Wayne Johnson and Twan Russell wrapping up. Number 35, Tyrone Stevens, a junior from Jessup, Georgia. Stevens averaging nearly six yards a carry. Russell and Johnson for the Hurricanes on the top. We'll be watching Dwayne Johnson today, replacing the injured star in the making, Warren Sapp, but the Hurricane coaching staff feel awfully good about the way Dwayne Johnson has made himself into a good football player. Right, he's matured quite, quite a bit. He came in and uh, they weren't sure about his ability, and now he's playing great football. On third and eight, quarterback draw for Dupree, and he'll lose a yard. Now the pocket collapsed in a hurry for Georgia transfer Joe Dupree. Number 91, Darren Krein, along with his defensive end partner Kevin Patrick Darren and Ray Kline. Lewis exactly. collapsing the pocket. Down. Another fourth down for Georgia Southern, trailing three to nothing. And Miami will get it back with just under six minutes left in this first period. Again, Bill Thatcher dropping back in a punt formation. Jonathan Harris awaits. Well, they're nice boot. Harris from the 32. And a penalty marker as Harris comes up to the 41. They will get an illegal block on Aaron Jones. That'll wipe out an eight-yard return. It was a 46-yard punt. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, throwing the return. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Here, here, here you see Aaron Jones. Uh, you know, he's just got to hold up there. You can't get your, your headgear in front of the guy. You just got to be able to pull back and let the receiving uh, receiver do something on his own. And there is just a bad decision by Aaron Jones. He's just trying to get his block. And bad decision. Aaron Jones, a redshirt freshman out of Merritt Island, Florida. Three wideouts for Miami. Chris Jones, Jamie German, Jonathan Harris all to the left. Lone setback on first down, Donnell Bennett. The junior from Fort Lauderdale takes it on first down. 
spinning ahead to the 32-yard line. That's an eight-yard gain and a nice stop by the outside linebacker, Darius Dawson. Donnell Bennett comes through the middle here, and you, you see him pick up eight yards, but for you folks at home, the, the thing to look at is this big hole that you see Tyrell Green and K.C. Jones, uh, Zeb Lomelski, just a big hole, and I tell you what, Eric, even you could run through that. I'd like to think so. <laughs> Tyrell Green doing an excellent job on Alex Mash that play. Bennett gets another try, and he slashes near the 40-yard line up to the 39. That's a seven-yard pickup, and a first down for the Miami Hurricanes as they ride the D-train. Donnell Bennett off his best-ever outing, 125 yards, 20 carries, pair of touchdowns at Colorado last Saturday. Well, he's the big gun when you start talking about the Miami's running game, and you know, he's proven that he should be the number one guy. And that offensive line is doing a good job of giving him room to run, and then he's making the most of it. Three to nothing, Miami. Four thirty-six to play here in the first quarter. And the ram to Chris Jones. A good block from Sae Tucker. And Jones finally swung down at the 45-yard line. Number 42, Nick Davis, the outside linebacker, part of the defense that stopped Jones, is to pick up a five. Georgia Southern defenders did a good job of staying at home, not being fooled by the flow, and they were in good shape for the reverse here. As you see, you see everybody flowing back to the football, and, and Davis forcing him to turn it up and in on the tackle. Good job by Georgia Southern of staying at home and playing control defense. Nice backside pursuit for the senior from Griffin, Georgia, number 42, Nick Davis. Second down and five for the Hurricanes. This is Larry Jones. The junior from Gainesville in the Georgia Southern Territory and inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Number 48, Dominic Turner riding the back of Larry Jones, but a big pickup, 12 yards, another Miami first down. Another big run, and once again, that offensive line just doing a great job. You got a trap block by Terrell Green, and no one touches Larry Jones until he's into the secondary, and this is how you have a great running game. You got to give that offensive line a lot of credit. Larry Jones, averaging over seven yards a carry, had 91 yards in the opener at Boston College on eight carries, but very quiet since. On first down, Costa goes down. There's the first sack this afternoon for the senior from Thomasville, Georgia, Alex Mash. He now has six and a half sacks on the year. Well, Alex Mash is one of those guys that never quits. He was blocked pretty good by Terrell Green, and he just kept moving his feet, moving his hands, fighting and fighting. And here you see Green is doing a good job, and he just stays after him. He's able to get Costa's, Costa as he steps up in the pocket. Also five, we talked to Tim Stowers yesterday. He said the number one thing about Mash is quickness. Yeah, he is extremely quick as well as strong, and that's just good determination by the defensive lineman. Second down, 15. Marcus Wimberly, the redshirt freshman from Memphis, Tennessee, covered closely by Darius Dawson. We do have a penalty markers down on the Georgia Southern secondary. Illegal participation on a defense, 15-yard penalty, previous spots. Boy, is that costly for Georgia Southern. Would have been a third and 15 for Miami. And it, that is a, a real big penalty. Illegal participation. 12 men on the field, on the defense, 15 yards penalty, first down. I don't see the 12th man, but, uh, you know, that's a very costly penalty, as you said, Eric, because you've got them backed up, you've got third and 15, and now you give them first down, and uh, with an offense this good, you can't afford to help them out. So the Hurricanes pick up their fifth first down with some help. Two and a half left in the first quarter, three to nothing Miami. Up plenty of time, and now it runs out on him in a hurry. Sack back at the 39-yard line. That's a five-yard loss. You know, the last time we did a Miami game here on Sunshine Network, it was against Virginia Tech here at the Orange Bowl. Costa was sacked four times. This was the second sack for the Georgia Southern defense already. All right, here you see him take a quick uh, three-step drop. He doesn't get real deep, and he pumps, and then he pulls back. You know, Chris Jones was open, but that's more of a coverage sack. Looked like Edward Thomas, the right side defensive end, rolled in the Costa for the sack. Second down and 15. 
This is Bennett weaving for big yards. Donnell Bennett with a stiff arm has the first down. Run out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 22. That's a 17-yard rumble for Donnell Bennett. I just go to show you what kind of type of offense the Hurricanes have this year is that they no longer have to live and die on the arms of the quarterback. They've got good, solid blocking up front, and they've got running backs that once they get an open field, they know what to do with the football. They're going north and south, not east and west. Well, the D-Train honored last week by the Big East Conference and having a similar first quarter. 3-0 Miami, minute 39, minute 39 left in the opening period. First and 10 at the Georgia Southern 23. And Costa wants it all. In and out of the hands of Jonathan Harris. And right between the safeties, Stockton number 14 and Hitson number 15. I tell you, Frank was very lucky on that play there because he threw right into the tooth of the coverage. They were in our zone defense there. And, uh, you know, Jonathan Harris almost comes down with the catch, but, you know, that's a tough pass to fit in there. And right there, if you see, Jonathan Harris almost gets his head taken off. Uh, this football team from Georgia Southern, as I said earlier, they will hit you. And they're a good football team, good hard-hitting, aggressive team. Pretty good coverage. You can see Costa has confidence in his strong right arm, tried to zip it right between two. On second and ten, the delay to Jones. He gets wrapped up at the 19-yard line. Pick up of four. And that'll bring up third and about six for Miami. Hurricane passing game bogging down just a bit. Their last five attempts, three incompletions, two sacks. Well, I, I think they're just trying to mix it up because the running game is going well, but, you know, you still want to continue to work on your passing game, and that's what, what they're trying to do. And... The thing that Georgia Southern is doing, they're playing a zone defense and taking away some of those passing lanes so that uh, Costa is having to eat the ball on a couple occasions. Frank Costa has it third and six from the Georgia Southern 18. Under a minute left first quarter. Here at the Orange Bowl, it's three to nothing Miami. Parker's down. Donnell Bennett smacking the helmets. Goes to the 16-yard line. Short gain will be shy of the first down, but it looked like Georgia Southern jumped off sides. Good, good cadence by uh, Frank Costa to pull him offside and had a free play there, and Donnell was running hard. Offside. Side. Defense. Repeat third down. But you're talking about a team that swarms the ball carry, and you, you had everybody coming up, and he just weren't able to get enough for a first down, but they get another play. Offside. Defense, a five-yard penalty. Here you see a good job of Frank with the cadence of drawing them off, getting them a little, get them, changing the snap count a little bit there so that uh, they can't uh, key in and get off on the ball. Looked like it was Walter Flowers, a freshman from Savannah, Georgia, that jumped off sides. Third penalty of the first quarter against the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Third down, a yard for Miami. Inside the Eagles, 15. Bennett has the first down. Donnell Bennett down to the 11. Brought down by number 48, Dominic Turner, but the Hurricanes should have enough to move the chains again. It is a first down for Miami, and that ends the first quarter. Well, Georgia Southern out of Division I AA. They made the trip down to Miami from Statesboro, Georgia, and through one quarter, they're still in this football game. We'll be right back. The Orange Bowl here in Miami. Well, the best scenes, the one that take place down on the field. Miami Hurricanes have won 52 in a row here at the Orange Bowl. Let's go downstairs, see what Joe Rose has for us. Thank you very much, Eric. Georgia Southern defense doing exactly what they had planned. Rush three and four men and force them to beat you with the run. They don't want to give up the big play with the pass offense today. Said the Hurricanes, if you're going to beat us, 80-yard drives on the ground will give them to you all day. We don't believe that you have the patience or the ability. Back up to you guys. 122 yards of offense for Miami through one quarter. 25 yards for Georgia Southern. Hurricanes. Starting tough with their defense in the first quarter. They have given up very, very little. And Donnell Bennett running well. Off to a good start today. Seven carries, 40 yards. Bennett and Larry Jones 
In the backfield for Frank Costa. This is the 11th play of a drive that began back at the Miami 24. First play of the second quarter and a first and 10 at the Georgia Southern 11. Nice cutback for Bennett. And he gets to the five yard line. Donnell Bennett finally Donnell stopped. Bennett the uh, cornerback, Sean Austin, but he had some help. Takes more than one man to bring number 33 down. He's a very tough, hard runner that usually keeps his legs pumping, and you know he'll get that extra two or three yards if you don't get the, a swarming, game-tackling type of team against him. You know, Bennett's 123 yards last week, almost a rarity. First time in about two years that a hurricane back has gone over 100 yards. Should not be a rarity much longer because the Hurricanes are loaded at running back this year. Second down and four. Bennett into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. 13th career touchdown for Donnell Bennett. You just have to give that offensive line a great deal of credit because no one is putting their hands on the on the running back until he's three, four yards downfield. And by the time there was a collision with Donnell Bennett there, he was already at the goal line. Good execution up front by that great offensive line that uh, for so many games or so many years have been marred that they were not a good run blocking football team. They're proving everybody wrong here today. Dane Pruitt out of the hold of Mike Chrissy. And he nails another point after touchdown for Miami. Well, first minute, second quarter, Miami tacks their first touchdown on the board. And it's the Hurricanes leading Georgia Southern by 10. 14-16 left here in the second quarter. The Hurricanes riding Donnell Bennett on that 12-play, 76-yard drive. Bennett already 49 yards rushing and a touchdown. Good job of blocking by the middle of that uh, offensive line. Uh, Rudy Barber, Tyrell Green, Casey Jones. Score the touchdown for those guys. Uh, Bennett will get his share down the line. Good blocking. Good tough running by Bennett as well. Well, good point, Nat. The Hurricanes taking care of business in the trenches. Tyrell Green, a 300-pound junior from Pittsburgh. Rudy Barber, a 295-pound senior guard out of Miami, Carroll City. There's your scoring drive. And of the 12 plays, 11 came on the ground. Well, that's what you like to see as a defensive core, uh, coach. Your, your offense controlling the football, keeping your defense off the field, and wearing down your opponents. That's Chris Wright. And against a swirling wind, Barnwell gets his foot into it right from the two. Lane for Chris Wright. All the way up to the 44-yard line. So a very handsome 42-yard kickoff return for Chris Wright. Finally roped down by Earl Little, the freshman safety from North Miami. This is where Georgia Southern could really help themselves. You know, in football, there's three teams. It's the offense, the defense, and the special team. And here you see them doing a good job on a kickoff return to get good field position to give their team a chance to go down and score. We get another look at Joe Dupree, who transferred from Georgia after his freshman year. The quarterback pitches to Chris Wright. Wright turned the corner and got three up to the 47-yard line. All white and Carl Richardson running out Chris Wright, who had his best game as a Georgia Southern player last week against Tennessee Chattanooga. 79 yards, seven carries, including a 28-yard touchdown run. And this is a kid that's got a lot of quickness, and here you see him pitching the ball to Shafton, and Fraley, Shafton Fraley, and he's outside with a lot of blocking in front, but one thing about that Miami defense, they pursue and they go to the football. 10-0 Miami, minute into the second quarter. Second down and six. Georgia Southern at their own 48. And Dupree fumbled the snap from center. Ellen Pyle, see who has it. By the way, interesting story about the Georgia Southern Center. Robert Moore, the freshman. Oh, Miami has recovered. Juan Russell recovers the football. Franklin Stevens 
is the Georgia Southern center today. He's a junior from Keysville, Georgia. And today, his first ever start at center. He is normally their all-conference right guard. I talked to the offensive line coach a little bit before the ball game, and they've been working all week because they're not sure when they're going to get Chapton back. And they wanted to work this unit some and, and just see what he could do at the center position, and he got his first start. So both teams have fumbled and lost their fumble. Hurricanes get it back, leading 10-zip. An excellent working position from the Georgia Southern 48. Derek Harris, the up back. The slot back, James Stewart gets it. Loads a running room. 13-yard pickup on first down for the load out of Vero Beach, Florida. James Stewart, a guy everybody on that Hurricane coaching staff raves about. <laughs> Coach Dennis, Dennis Erickson, every time you talk to him about James, you see his face light up and he starts to smile because he feels this is the back that uh, could be their back of the future. The guy that uh, not only has speed and quickness, but has a lot of power to go along with it. James Stewart, like a sledgehammer that can motor. Nine first downs for Miami, just one for Georgia Southern. At the Eagle 35. This is Stewart coming right. Oh, what a collision. James Stewart running right over number 11, Danny Britt. Again, close to 10 yards on the pickup, and you see the sledgehammer with wheels, James Stewart. That's where Danny Britton have to say, did anybody get the number of that truck that just hit him? The thing that they like about James Stewart is you see him coming around the corner is that he doesn't shy away from the contact. He just drops his helmet and runs over, folks, and tries to get pick up the extra yardage. What a weapon James Stewart is. Danny Britt, the junior from Baconton, Georgia, probably still seeing some stars. Second down one, Stewart again, has the first down, and gets inside the Georgia Southern 20-yard line. Six-yard gain for the sophomore James Stewart, who is averaging just about seven yards a carry. I'll tell you, when you look at him here, you can understand why. When you've got an offensive line that's coming off the ball, a guy that has that kind of speed and, and is willing to mix it up and run over folks as well as run around them, you know that he's going to run for a great average. Miami is grinding it out on the ground here in the second quarter with a 10 to nothing lead. From the Georgia Southern 20, Larry Jones alone set back. Costa finds his man, and Dietrich Clausel is swarmed at the 16-yard line. That's a four-yard gain for Clausel, who makes his third catch of the year. There's Nick Davis, the linebacker, on the stop. Well, as, you, as you see, Costa goes back. He's looking at the tight end all the way. He hits Clausel. But the thing you have to lack about this Georgia Southern football team is they all float to the football, and they swarm, and they come up, and they put the hat on you. Well, their head coach, Tim Stowers, calls it heart speed. He says we have that in common with the University of Miami. Second down, three to go for the Canes at the Georgia Southern 13. Harry Jones trying to bounce outside. Could not. No gain. Ball Carroll, the middle linebacker, leading the Georgia Southern charge to the ball carrier. And Carroll, a guy that can do it sideline to sideline. He loves to put a helmet on you. A uh, middle linebacker that has good, has a lot of speed, can flow either way. And here you see him just flowing to the football. And the only mistake that Larry Jones makes here is that eventually you've got to turn up field to go north and south versus running east and west. West. Miami two out of three on third down. And it's third and three. Eric Harris in front of James Stewart in the eye set. Great block by Harris. Stewart dances away from Carroll, has the first down, penalty marker down, as Stewart gets run out by the cornerback, Sean Austin. Another power run for James Stewart. But it'll come back on a holding call. Well, that's a shame because James Stewart just did a great job of running and lifting up his feet, kicking through the tackler and coming up with the Holding yardage necessary for first down. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. And the Hurricanes are showing off an impressive power look with James Stewart as the tailback and a 240-pound fullback by the name of Derek Harris who loves to block. 
Well, I think that's that's why they're such a good football team running the football for a change. They've got the offensive line coming off the ball. They've got the backs blocking for each other. And you've got big, strong backs that are breaking tackles. It's not just a home run, guys. It's guys that can get that tough yardage for you. Nice afternoon here in Miami. Temperature around 85 degrees. A nice breeze blowing into the face of Frank Costa on third and eight. Snap, but a timeout was called by Miami. Miami. So we'll step aside for just a moment. 10:35 left in the first half. Both third-ranked Hurricanes leading by 10. Frank Costa been in control of things. The junior quarterback from Philadelphia, just his fourth career start. And he's had it easy today, handing it off and admiring the work of that front five and the running backs. Makes it a little bit easier sitting back in the pocket when the other team have to worry about you running the football. Tim Stowers trying to find a solution. Third down and eight at the Georgia Southern 18. Costa from the gun. Donnell Bennett could not drag away from Scott Davis. Gets inside the 15 to the 14. Just a four-yard gain. And that'll be short of the first down. And we'll bring up a fourth and four. So for the second time today, we'll see the place kicker, Dane Pruitt, attempt a field goal. Hit in the first quarter from 33 yards. This one from 32. Pruitt, a perfect four for four on the year. And make it a handful for Dane Pruitt. He's hit all five of his field goals here in his sophomore season. 9.52 to play, second quarter, 13 to nothing in favor of Miami. Hurricane football. Live the tradition and celebrate the 1983 National Championship this Saturday as the Hurricanes take on the Temple Owl. The 15th Annual Electric Island Run benefiting the Diabetes Research Institute at the University of Miami School of Medicine kicks off Sunday morning October 10th at 7.30. This energized event includes a 15K run, a 5K run, and a wheelchair division. Registration fee is $15 in advance and $20 the day of the race. The Electric Island Run. For more information, call the DRI Foundation at 305-477-3437. Sunday on Sunshine Network. Back here in Miami, the Hurricanes off the fumble recovery by Twan Russell. Back on another Dane Pruitt field goal, and it's now a 13 to nothing lead over the visitors from Statesboro, Georgia. This is a much different ball game than we expected, though, Eric. Uh, we expected the Hurricanes to come in here and run the score up, and, you know, ironically, Georgia Southern has hung in there pretty good defensively and made Miami earn everything they've gotten. Chris Wright, 5'8", 168, junior out of Valdosta, Georgia. This is the view he has of Scott Barnwell. Great work by our Sunshine crew. Wright starts from the 12. Fumbles the football. And the 25. Let's see who comes out with it. Indication is that Georgia Southern keeps it. 9.45 left, second quarter. Jonathan Richardson, number 29, came away with it. Here you see right uh, on your screen, trying to turn it up, and Malcolm Pearson comes in and strips him of the football, but Georgia Southern was able to get on the football and retain possession. The first down for the Eagles at their own 25. 
The flip back to Shafton Fraley, and he gets across the 30, up near the 34-yard line. Nearly a nine-yard pickup for Shafton Fraley, a junior out of Milledgeville, Georgia. And Fraley is explosive as well. You see the numbers at 68 yards, just four carries against Tennessee Chattanooga last Saturday. This kid's got a lot of speed, and when you get him outside, he can really turn on the afterburners. But, you know, the, the difference is today, he's running against guys uh, with the University of Miami that has just as much speed. On second and one, the fullback James Williams straight ahead picks up the first down. He gets to the 39-yard line. See Baraka Short in at a defensive end spot for Miami, number 50. And in at a linebacker spot, freshman James Burgess, who wears number 54. Burgess playing the outside, along with Twan Russell, Ray Lewis still on the inside. First and 10 for Georgia Southern. This is Chris Wright. James Burgess from behind, roping down Wright. But not before Chris Wright picks up nine. James Burgess shows you he can cover some ground, the first-year player out of Homestead, Florida. Well, they've got two great freshman uh, linebackers here, and you'll see James Burgess on, on your screen. As the ball is pitched, he's just running to the football and just sort of hog ties uh, Wright here and pulls him down after an eight-yard gain. All three of the linebackers in the game for Miami are freshmen. Second down a yard for Georgia Southern, their own 47. And the fullback straight ahead, that's James Williams again. And Georgia Southern hammers its way to another first down inside of Hurricane territory with 8.28 remaining in the first half. Well, Eric, if you notice what they're doing now, they're starting to give the ball to the fullback a little bit more to keep that middle linebacker at home. And if that linebacker runs out of there, the, court, the fullback has a chance of popping it up the middle. Wide receiver at the top of your screen, Dexter Dawson, a sophomore, a big playmaker, in quiet thus far. On first and ten, this is Darren Willis. Nice catch, nice run with it. Picked up nearly ten for the Miami 41, where Paul White put an end to it. That's a familiar combination. Darren Willis and Joe Dupree went to high school together in Macon, Georgia. Willis is a transfer from East Carolina. Well, Willis is the guy that coming that came into this year as the big play receiver, but Dexter Dawson is a guy that had the big game against uh, Tennessee Chattanooga, and they're still expecting big things from uh, Willis. There's a penalty marker down for Miami. That's Darius McCallum. A redshirt freshman out of Gainesville. Outside. He's a defensive back. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. They'll be offsides on Miami. They'll repeat first down. Kevin Patrick, the man that moved, number 86. The right side defensive end from Palm Springs, Florida. Here you see Joe Dupree as he goes back and... Uh, Earlier, we saw a clip where they were showing that quick screen again, and you know that's what they've got to do. Mix up the plays and, and find ways to get the ball to those outside speedy guys to take away some of that pursuit of the Hurricane. Again, movement on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Finger pointing each ways on first down and five. And the preliminary indication indicates it's against Miami. Hurricanes leading it if you're just joining in. 13 to nothing. Offside defense. First down. A couple of field goals for Dane Pruitt. A five-yard touchdown run for Donnell Bennett. And that time it was Kenny Lopez, number 71, getting the false start. You know, earlier we talked about... Uh, Costa's ability to use the snap count and to draw people offside. And we see that uh, du Dupree has the same ability, and he's not going to let them sit on his snap count and get off the ball every time. Here's Joe Dupree, has it first and ten. Fumble! But it's recovered by the man that dropped it, James Williams. Well, the option offense, we say it every week, high risk, high reward. Nearly lost it again. Well, he nearly lost it because he was trying to pull it out. He put it in to the fullback, and it's his read, and James takes it from him instead of letting him leave it in or pull it out, and there you see the ball on the ground, but he was fortunate enough to get back on it. Loss of one, second down and 11, as Joe Dupree looks to his sideline. 
Dupree at Georgia actually started a game as a freshman. But he transferred when the Bulldogs decided to go with Eric Zier at the quarterback position. Second down and ten. Dupree wants a throw. Won't get a chance. Swarmed and smothered back at the 44. That's just good pass rush by the two the two defensive ends. You see both Darren Crine and Kevin Patrick come around, and there's a meeting at the quarterback. And, of course, you've got Tawan Russell coming in, shaking the ball loose, but a little late because the ball, the play had already been ruled dead. You're right, though. Crine and Patrick, the first two to get there, an assist from Tuan Russell, who's making his first career start today. As we look at Kevin Patrick getting a piece of his fourth sack of his senior season. Third down, 15, just under six left, second quarter, 13 to nothing Miami. Here's the give straight ahead for James Williams. He gets to the 36-yard line. Needed 15, Williams gains nine. So a fourth and sixth decision ahead for Tim Stowers. But a good play selection, knowing that Miami was going to come after him. They came close to popping the fullback free up the middle and uh, had a good pickup, good long gain, and they've got a chance to go for the field goal. And you're talking about a guy that's kicked, what, three 53-yarders? Yes, sir, in his career, including a 53-yarder last week. And this will be a 53-yarder. Reed Haley, the junior from Clearwater, Florida, will try to put the Eagles on the board. And somebody got a piece of it, I think. Paul White, they have got a hand on the football, number four, because that kick, not even close. It wasn't close, and uh, that's that's good special teams, boy, when you got that guy coming around the corner that has that 4-4 speed that can get his hands on the football. Paul White did a good job of shaving the corner and laying out to deflect the kick. Now the Hurricanes gave up just seven points in their opener at Boston College, just two against Virginia Tech. They have held Georgia Southern off the scoreboard to this point. 5.06 to play in the first half. And up 13 to nothing. The Hurricanes get it back on offense. Where they've been chewing up their own Orange Bowl turf via the rush. Costa comes up short at the 40-yard line intended for Sae Tucker, the tight end. It's a lovely coverage. Modest numbers thus far for Frank Costa, who has been over 200 yards passing in all three of his starts. Well, the difference today versus Colorado, they were able to get Colorado in some man coverage, and they were able to hit some guys deep. Georgia Southern is determined to stay in their zone defense, play the 4-3, and sit back and let the safeties react up, as well as the linebackers. Three receivers to the top. James Stewart runs to the sideline and doesn't get very far at all. Michael Morris dragging him down from behind. The six foot three inch junior from Adele, Georgia. Very rangy and athletic defensive end. Do have a penalty flag down. And it looks like a hold against the Hurricanes. Holding offense decline. Third down. Georgia Southern declines the penalty, and that'll bring up a third down and 11 for Miami. Here you see the speed of Michael Morris, the defensive uh, right end, as he runs down James Stewart from the backside, uh, being unblocked. Now let's see what Dennis Erickson calls here. Stewart, the lone back, third down and 11. And Brian Sellers came charging in a little bit early. The nose guard from Tylertown, Mississippi, knows it. He knows it, but, you know, to get ahead and, and try and do something to stop this offensive line of the Hurricanes, offside. you know, you've got to sort of cheat it. You've got to try and get off on the snap count, and once again, they tricked him and pulled him off with a uh, delayed snap count. Offside. Defense. Third down. But, you know, he was only a little bit offside. <laughs> Ryan Sellers wondering... Have I gotten this quick all of a sudden? <laughs> well, Casey Jones has done a good job of handling him most of the day, and you know, he's just trying to find that edge so he can get some penetration and stop this running game. Four and a half minutes left, first half. Third and six for Miami at their own 40. Lots of 
minutes of time for Costa. And he gets it to A.C. Tellison. We didn't expect to see A.C. again today. But he grabs the pass seven yards, first down Miami. That was just a great catch. The cornerback was in good position there. You're talking about Brandon Roselle. He breaks on the ball, and A.C. Tellison just goes up over him and comes down with the, with the catch for the first down. I mean, you, you're talking about a receiver making a big play. This could have been an interception. But as you see, Costa let the ball go. Tellison goes up, takes it away. Good coverage, an even better catch for A.C. Tellison, a six-foot-four-inch junior out of Bay City, Texas. He's made some big catches already this year for Miami. Now Costa bouncing that one short of James Stewart on first down. That was just a miscue. I don't think James Stewart is used to operating out there, Eric, because that was supposed to be a quick hitch. And instead of going five yards and turning around, I think he went about eight, nine yards, and the ball was already in the air. Just a little miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback. Well, Stewart is inexperienced. He missed all of last year with a shoulder injury. Getting his first significant playing time. Second down, 10. This is Stewart. Turns it up. And carries about five tacklers with him to the 45-yard line. Pickup of nearly six yards for James Stewart. Art Kehoe, who coaches the tight ends at Miami, uses the term scary good when he refers to James Stewart. Well, I'll tell you, th these running backs for the University of Miami, the first guy in has a headache. The first guy is going to get ran over, ran around. Very seldom will you see one guy bring down one of these U University of Miami running backs because they all run tough with the football. Well, Georgia Southern's Scott Davis looks to be the one that's down. There's Darius McCullum, the redshirt freshman safety for Miami, out with a sprained right shoulder. We will not see him again this afternoon. Four minutes, nine seconds left, first half. 13 to nothing Miami, and there goes Scott Davis, junior middle linebacker out of Powder Springs, Georgia, and he needs a helping hand to make it back to that Eagles bench. There will be a number of bells rung for Georgia Southern today. Well, here you see he gets rolled by the by Terrell Green as he comes down. He blocks him around the legs, which is legal. But uh, anytime you see guys around your knees, you, you, you worry about a, a player hurting his knee or some type of knee injury, and hopefully he'll be back. Third down four for Miami at the Georgia Southern 45. Stewart on his own, rumbles inside the 40 to the 37 as the first down before Alton hits him, could knock him off track. Hits him, and number 19, Marco Bradham, able to derail James Stewart, but not before he was able to pick up another first down. Did you say derail? You can't be talking about James Stewart. I, I, you've got to enjoy watching this young man run because he just runs through people. He just runs over folks, and he's not going to be knocked back. And I think as a, an ex-player, this is what you've got to look forward to. Seeing a guy with so much tenacity will not be denied. We are looking at a future NFL draft pick, no question about it. Lots of folks already touting Stewart as a future number one pick by the NFL, and that we're seeing why. Sprinter's speed and a big-time body to play the fullback spot. Well, I tell you, every time he runs the football, he runs it as if this is his last play, and uh, he tries to get the most out of every play, and that means sacrificing your body and running over people, and he's shown no fear when it comes to that. Halftime just 3.43 away, and we've got much ahead for you including a conversation with Leonard Hamilton, who coaches Miami Hurricane basketball squad. Much to talk about with Leonard. They're just a month away from beginning their practices. Well, Leonard is not only a great coach, he's a great individual. I, uh, I was one of his biggest fans in college. He and I uh, both were at UT Martin for a, for a spell there, and uh, you, know, you could tell then that he would make a great coach. Longtime assistant at Kentucky, ran his own program at Oklahoma State, and 
taking Miami in a very interesting era of Big East basketball. They'll be able to get some good things done this coming year. And, and has done an unbelievable job here at home as far as uh, being able to compete and having a winning record at home in the Big East. You're right. They went 7-2 and two at Miami Arena in Big East play last year. Well, Dennis Erickson, he wasn't displeased to have this game on the schedule the week before Florida State, giving Dennis a chance to rest some of his injured people, including defensive starters Warren Sapp, Corwin Francis, and Robert Bass, also sitting this one out, tailback Danielle Ferguson. Well, this is the next best thing to having a bye week as long as you don't get a, one of your key players hurt in the process. But uh, it's a good tune-up before going into Tallahassee next week. Hurricanes would like another strike here in the final 343 of the first half. First and 10. Costa on a short drop, looking all right. And he tried to pull that one back. Chris Jones well covered down the right sideline. And the closest man to it was the middle linebacker, Huey Hunt. Once again, you know, Frank does a good job of getting back, but what, as you see, it's a three-step drop, and the linemen are not cut blocking. So he's got to either take a five-step drop and throw it on timing, or three-step and just let the ball go. Miami's passing game, a little bit inconsistent so far through this first half. Second and ten. Wimberley, Tellison, and Harris all flanked to the top. Out of the shotgun. Looking underneath. Saeed Tucker, first down at the 20, inside to the 19-yard line. Nice strike. Saeed Tucker brought down by Marco Bradham. But a first down for Miami on a pickup of 17 yards. Now see, on that play, he went back, Eric. He took a five-step drop, stepped up, threw the football. There was no indecision. He was able to get the ball, and he was able to fit it in versus a tight zone. As you see, Tucker goes down. He's back five steps, steps up, boom, on rhythm. That's what you got to have your quarterback do. And then Tucker does a good job of picking picking up a few extra yards. You know, anytime you go back and, and you only take that three-step three, three step drop, it, it puts you in a difficult position. That went off the hands of Sae Tucker. Frank Costa trying to put the touch on it and just out of the reach for the six-foot, six-inch tight end who has a couple of catches already today. Yeah, he tried to pull the string on this one and it got, a, got away from him a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's a pass that, uh, you know, he's going to have to complete in the big ball game. And this is a good time to run those plays and try and get some experience at throwing that type of pass. That's Tommy Spangler, Georgia Southern's defensive coordinator. This is the 10th play of this Miami drive. Second and 10 at the Georgia Southern 19. James Stewart. Still going. To the 11-yard line, another 8-yard rumble for the wrecking ball. James Stewart. That'll bring up a third down and let's call it a short two. If I was an offensive lineman, any time I hear them call James Stewart's number, I'm going to block a little harder because I know if I block for four or five yards, as you see Barber here just getting a tie, he's going to run over and run through tacklers, and we're going to come up with a 10-yard game, and it's going to look good when it comes to grading the film on Sunday. Dominic Turner finally brought down Stewart. And we get a penalty marker thrown with full, full start offense against Miami with 2.26 to play in the first half. It's 13 to nothing, Hurricanes. That'll make it third down and eight. Jones, A.C. Tellison, Jonathan Harris all come to the right. On setback is Stewart. Here's Stewart. Nice cutback. Brought down at the 14-yard line. At number 37, Huey Hunt. So a four-yard pickup and another opportunity for a Dan Pruitt field goal. Oh, here you see Costa goes back. He looks downfield and there's a screen all, all the way out to James Stewart just trying to give him a little running room. But Georgia Southern is sitting back in their zone defense, reacting up, holding him short of the first down. This will be a 31-yard attempt. Pruitt has already hit from 33 and 32. Dane Pruitt has the hat trick here.
here in the first half. Three field goals for Pruitt. Well, and it's now a 16-0 lead for Miami. Well, Pruitt is getting a lot of work for next week, but I think the guy that's getting a workout is James Stewart, and I think this is the time that uh, Coach Erickson has decided that he's going to give him some work because he could be sorely needed next week where if anything happens to Donnell Bennett or Larry Jones, he'll be the first guy in. So the Hurricanes developing some depth today. Tim Stowers developing a little more character, but he is quite a country homespun character. We had a great chat with him yesterday. Yeah, that was enjoyable. Uh, you know, this is a guy that's ready for major college football, even though he's at Division I AA. He is ready for his own TV show. I think uh, he's ready to play the coach on uh, Saturday, on, what's that, uh, Monday night? <laughs> <laughs> well, he said to us earlier this week about his expectations of this game. We hope they sign the check, cook the chicken, and have plenty of crutches on hand. <laughs> but he's a good football coach and a fun guy to be around. Tim Stowers, who worked with Irk Russell for five years as his offensive line coach, he said, Irk taught me two things, to keep it simple, and number two, if you play hard, things will take care of itself. Well, that, that's what he felt the, the difference was in the University of Miami's football team is that they play hard, they have fun, and they do the same things over and over again. So by keeping it simple, you don't make a lot of mental mistakes. And that's what he's been able to transpire with his football team, and that's what he feels that Miami does. And uh, it's a program that they would like to emulate. Scott Barnwell has it teed up. He'll send it to Chris Wright. And at 23 left in the half, 16 to nothing Miami, the Hurricanes have scored on their last four possessions. Wright started at the 7, advances to the 30, a 23-yard return, and the special team stop made by Marvin Davis. There's your scoring drive, 12 plays, 49 yards, Dane Pruitt's third field goal. Do you sense some frustration, Nat, by Miami? They've had to settle three times for a Pruitt field goal rather than touchdowns. I, I think that is, is extremely frustrating if, if for no one else but the quarterback, Frank Costa. You know, you've got to be patient, and, and eventually it'll happen, but if you start trying to force the issue is when you come up with big plays that uh, hurt you. Joe Dupree on the keep, brought down by Baraka Short, getting some playing time this afternoon. The defensive end out of Opelika, Florida, had a great career at Norland High School. And Dupree calls timeout with just under a minute left here in the second quarter. I talked with uh, Tommy Tuberville before the ball game, and their key to beating this football team and, and handling them pretty well was to stop the fullback, to force Pru uh, Dupree to pull it out and complete the option because they felt if he went through that second option and had to pitch the ball, they could get some turnovers. And as you see, they've taken away the fullback most of the day, and they've been successful. If the fullback starts to rumble, then you're talking about Georgia Southern able to execute their offense totally, and it will put Miami in a position where now they've got to stay home and play their own, uh, their own position. Don't forget the National Hockey League here on Sunshine Network. Wednesday, Tampa Bay Lightning at New Jersey to play the Devils. And on Thursday, October 7th, the Florida Panthers and the Blues from St. Louis. Game subject to NHL territorial restrictions. Here's Miami Arena, the home for the Florida Panthers of the NHL, the Miami Heat of the NBA. Just a short hop away from the Orange Bowl. And Joe Dupree swarmed under by the Hurricane defense. He gets maybe a yard. James Burgess, the active outside linebacker, first to get there. Timeout Miami. 47 seconds left here in the first half. Hurricane. This is a big year for Georgia Southern. Last two years, Tim Stowers' team finishes 7-4 and four and not invited to the 1AA playoffs. 16 teams are invited. This is the first year they've been a member of the Southern Conference, a league which gets an automatic bid. But Marshall is in that league. Marshall has already beaten this Georgia Southern team, and they're the top-ranked team in 1AA. So it would take an at-large bid for Tim Stowers, perhaps, to get back to the playoffs. You see, he won it all in his first year, going 12-3 in 1990. But the two 7-4 years have set him back just a bit. 
Well, they're a little disappointed in the, in the last two years that they were not in the in the playoffs, but they feel that if uh, they can come in here and survive Miami or even lose to Miami and then go undefeated from here on in, that that will get them an at-large bid. And once they get in the playoffs, we all know what can happen in a sudden-death playoff. Well, on the other sideline, 45-year-old Dennis Erickson, the former Montana State quarterback, has different concerns, getting his team prepared for the second half today and uh, not to look ahead, but the game of the year looms just a week away at Florida State next Saturday. Dupree going deep on third and nine, overshot his man, Dexter Dawson, down the right sideline and running step for step with him. Carlos Jones, the best young defensive back for the Hurricanes. Young defensive back with a lot of speed, but he did a good job there of staying back, not going for the pump fake on the out and up and being in good position so they were not able to complete the pass. Well, Miami takes its last timeout. Time out. Miami, the third and final timeout for the half. Stopping the clock with 40 seconds to play. Hurricanes would like more points ahead 16 to nothing. Plus, I think uh, the Hurricanes would like to use this opportunity to work on their two-minute drill. You, know, you, you never get enough work to prepare for the big ball games, and here's an opportune time because there's no way at the end of the ball game, if they play good football, they should have a two-minute drill. Here's that opportunity, and Dennis want to take advantage of that. And there is Dennis Erickson. You know what his record is here at the Orange Bowl? 25-0. But a week from today, he'll be taking his team to Doak. Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee to take on Bobby Bowden's top-ranked Florida State Club. Then it's back home against Syracuse. The Orange men losing at home this afternoon to Boston College. Well, that's one of the big ball games on the U University of Miami schedule, but you know they can't afford to not even look past Georgia Southern or Florida State thinking about the Big East. Major hurdle to another national championship lies one week away for Miami. Bill Thatcher at his own 18. Hurricanes were coming. Thatcher got it away well. And Harris takes the fair catch at the 26. So Frank Costa will have 33 seconds left in the first half to get something done. Now this is a, a situation where you've got 33 seconds. You, you've got it the ball at your 26 yard line and Miami would like to move it into field goal position see if they can come up with another field goal they're not thinking touchdown at this moment they're thinking field goal and if they're able to get down the field in a hurry they'll be able to accomplish that Jones to the bottom of your screen Harris in the slot Tellison up top this is Chris Jones up to the 32 yard line that's a pickup of six Good safe pass, a little hitch route out to Chris Jones. He goes down eight yards. Costa goes back, sets, throws the football. He catches the ball, gets out of bounds. Preserving time. Good, smart football in a two-minute drill. Took all of four seconds. 29 seconds left in the first half. Down the middle for Tucker. Great catch in the Georgia Southern Territory at the 43-yard line. Cy Tucker reaching out, taking a wallop, but holding on. Good concentration by Cy Tucker as he catches the ball, takes the hit, jumps right up, and ready to get started for the next play. 21-yard gain and a great reach and catch by Tucker. 20 seconds left in the half, and Costa stops it best way he can. I tell you, Eric, Costa showed a lot of uh, smarts there and a lot of leadership. You had Chris Jones that didn't realize the tight end was on his side and had lined up on the line of scrimmage, and Costa had enough presence to tell Chris to move back so they wouldn't be legal and lose five yards. Good heads-up play by Frank Costa. And now how about Sae Tucker? He has had a case of the dropsies early on in the season, dropping a few catchable footballs. That was a stellar catch. That's called great concentration, and uh, he's shown through the, through the early part of this season that he can catch the football. And here you see Dane Pruitt warming up for his opportunity. 18 seconds left in the half. Costa got to get it closer. And he will not. Michael Morris ropes him down at the 45-yard line. That's a loss of one. Clock still running down under 10 seconds. And the Hurricanes will have problems getting another snap off. 
Well, that was a sack that Frank could not afford to take. You know, there was plenty of time, but they were covered. He's got to throw the ball away. Got to get rid of it because, you know, you're talking about no timeouts left. You cannot afford a sack, and he took a big sack there. Well, the Hurricanes walk to the dressing room with a 16 to nothing lead thanks to three Dane Pruitt field goals and a five-yard touchdown run from Donnell Bennett. So while Dennis Erickson's team was in control, Tim Stowers, Georgia Southern Eagles, with nothing to be ashamed about. They've basically kept Miami out of the end zone. Yeah, you've got to be impressed with uh, Georgia Southern's defense. They've done a good job of keeping them out of the end zone, but more so, they have not been able to throw the football with any degree of success. Joe Rose is standing by with the head coach of Georgia Southern. Thank you very much, Eric. Coach, i got to ask you, first of all, great performance so far in the first half for your defense. Well, our defense is really playing hard. we got one of the outstanding defense in one double-A. Our offense has had some opportunities to move the football. We had field position to turn it over one time. Another time we missed the field goal. We just got to punch it on in, knock it on in, get first downs and move the ball on down the field and get touchdowns. Looks like the guys, uh, I was over in the second quarter, guys getting a little bit tired. Well, we've played a lot of plays on defense. I believe we'll get a little rest in the second, rest at halftime. I think we'll be all right in the second half. Okay, good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, back up to you guys. A little country cooking for Georgia Southern and their fine head coach, Tim Stowers. We're halfway through at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The number three Hurricanes leading it by 16. Georgia Southern still without any yards passing at all. And that's what Miami wanted to do, was force them to have to throw the football, but they're not having any success at this moment. What do you look forward to in the second half for Miami? I look forward to Miami coming up and continuing to take away the fullback and forcing them to throw the football because Dupree has completed less than 35% of his passes, so why not force them to throw the football? Well, the Hurricanes looking to take care of business, make it 53 in a row here at the Orange Bowl, and on the Tallahassee for the showdown with number one Florida State a week from today. We'll be back. The start of the third quarter right after this on Sunshine Network. The breeze blows in the open end of the Orange Bowl. We're about set for third quarter action. Third ranked Miami with a 16 to nothing lead over Georgia Southern. Now through one half, looking at some of the numbers individually, Donnell Bennett leading the Hurricanes with eight carries, 48 yards. James Stewart, nine carries, 58 yards. Frank Costa's numbers, nine of 19, 125 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been sacked twice. Georgia Southern will kick it away, and this is number six, Eric Smith, who is a very strong kickoff man. Back in twin safety formation for the Hurricanes, Jamie German, number seven, Jonathan Harris, number three. German on the one bounce from two yards deep. the 21-yard line. Brought down by Eric Thigpen, number 27 on the special team. So the Hurricanes will begin first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Florida State in a walk over Georgia Tech, so they stay unbeaten. And your Gators come back against Mississippi State, 38-24. to In the Big East, Boston College with a huge win at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Now about West Virginia at home, holding off a very strong Virginia Tech squad. There are the numbers on Frank Costa. This is Bennett. Now the cut inside gets him five to the 26-yard line. Here's a look at Miami's drive chart. Remember the fumble on their opening possession? After that, hard to stop. Hard to stop and uh, just good execution. And this is what they've got to do today. Work on fundamentals and get ready for next week when they play that uh, team up there in Flo at Florida State. Alan Simonette, number 66, opening at right guard for Miami here in the third quarter. Larry Jones gets the give. Straight ahead until he's brought down by the inside linebacker, Paul Carroll. Very close to a first down. And it is. Hurricane first down. 
So two runs here in the third quarter. Another move of the chains for Miami. All right here you see the Rudy Barber just does a good job of taking his man the way he wants to go, and Larry Jones break, breaks off the backside and comes up with a big run for first down. That offensive line of the Hurricanes is just coming off the football and taking control of the line of scrimmage. Dietrich Clausel, the tight end to the right. Costa rolling to his left. on the far sideline at the 34. That's a two-yard pickup for Frank Costa. And Morris shows you some range from that defensive end spot. Right. Big, strong defensive end with a lot of speed and quickness, and he showed uh, good uh, good speed getting outside because Frank had plenty of blocking. But the defensive uh, secondary did a good job of covering all of his receivers, and he had to pull it down and try and run for a couple yards gain. Morris out of the lineup. Edward Thomas replaces number 91. Wimberly to the right, German in the slot, Harris tight. Dietrich Clausel with a catch right at the first down marker up at the 42-yard line. Gain of eight, which is what they needed. It'll be very close. And another first down for Miami. So they picked up two first downs on their opening drive here in the third quarter, leading 16 to nothing. They picked up two first downs by running the football and then keeping it in the middle. They, they seem like they're throwing the ball at Paul Carroll, but he's always around the football and making good short tackles to hold him to a short game. 17 first downs for the Hurricanes, just four for Georgia Southern. Costa going deep. Nobody out there, and it's picked up hits him the free safety and German wraps him up brings him down by the face mask at the 20 yard line and a penalty marker down I think we've got a face mask by uh, Jamie German as he uh, makes the tackle but you know they're back once again playing that soft zone with nowhere to throw the football and Frank threw it Point up for grabs first foul face mask Defense, first down, 15-yard penalty. That was a bad-looking play all around for Miami because Costa did have time and nobody near that football. Well, nobody's open. He's trying to get the ball to Jamie German, but there's a couple defenders back there in good position to come down with the pick. You know, that's a ball that should never have been thrown. Here you see Costa. He's uh, he's trying to get up and uh, do what all good quarterbacks do after they throw an interception is be in on the tackle. But uh, he's got to be frustrated at this point. Second time this year Costa's been intercepted. The first time since the fourth quarter of the opener at Boston College. Captain Fraley following his blocks well. The 47-yard line, nine-yard pickup for Shafton Fraley. Well, this option is a beautiful thing when ran properly, and the guy that does a good job that uh, springs this for more than a four- or five-yard gain is Darren Willis, who comes over the receiver. He's a good blocker, and he does a good job of keeping the safety from getting in on the play and stopping it early. A first down and 10 for the Eagles of Georgia Southern at their own 47-yard line, still looking for their first points. And James Williams looking for a bit of fresh air. He was smothered. Rohan Marley, number two. Darren Krein, number 91, right there. Well, Rohan was blitzing on that play right into the hole where the fullback was running. And it was one of those times when Dupree did not pull the ball out, gave it to the fullback. And uh, Rohan was right there to hit him as he took the football. Kevin Patrick also had his arms around the ball carrier. Second down and ten. The slot backs and the fullback behind Dupree. This is right in motion. He gets the pitch. Good block. This right in the Miami territory, turning the corner and being run out at the Hurricane 43. Ray Lewis and Dexter Siegler on the stop of Chris Wright. So we've seen Wright go right, Fraley go left, and they get good gains on both plays. Right. Here you see the pitch to right, but you don't get a chance to see the big block thrown by Shafton Fraley that springs him around the corner. These guys do an excellent job of blocking for each other, and that's why they have such big runs. Georgia Southern just one of six on third down today. Dennis Erickson hoping his defense can hold here on third down and one. Early moments, third quarter. Dupree on the keep, won't get it. Kevin Patrick from behind, hauling down Joe Dupree. 
That was just an excellent play by Kevin Patrick where he had a little blitz on, no but instead of coming deep, he came right down the line of scrimmage and was able to stop him before the play got started. Well, Tim Stowers debating, do I go for it or not? And he will send in his punting team. Here you see Patrick just doing a good Back job of trailing the play the and uh, turning on the pursuit so he was able to make the tackle, but for no gain. Do you agree with Tim Stowers putting away on fourth and one? I think that's a, that's a good situation because Miami is not going to give them a chance to get a trick play on them, but more so, they're in good position. It's 16 zip. They're a big play offense with the option and a couple big plays. They could be right back in the ball game. What they don't want to do is give Miami good field position to start the second half. 33-yard punt for Georgia Southern. It'll be first and 10 for Miami at their own 11 when we come back. Let's go downstairs. Joe Rose standing by. Thank you very much, Eric. Georgia Southern has dedicated this season putting a DL on their helmets. Uh, Dean Lott was a freshman defensive back. He died in an automobile accident after his freshman year. They've dedicated this season to him. Well, Tim Stowers, the head coach of Georgia Southern, actually delivered the eulogy at Dean, at, uh, Dean Lott's funeral. 90 players from his football team were there, and he said it's all about attitude. Dean Lott had a great attitude, always a smile on his face, always willing to work, and they've tried to structure that attitude at the Georgia Southern program. The kind of young man that you love to be around as a coach and as a player that, uh, as, as Coach Stauer said, has a positive attitude, and that had to be the toughest thing he ever had to do uh, during the eulogy. Well, from the 11, Frank Costa, after throwing the interception, hands it to Donnell Bennett, who comes across the 15, but not quite to the 16-yard line. Scott Davis, the inside linebacker, putting his shoulder pads right into the midsection of Donnell Bennett with an assist from Brian Sellers. A little counter action where you pull the tackle. You see Zeb Lemelski going up front and Donnell Bennett keeping his feet were, uh, moving, running up the back of Rudy Barber. Five-yard gain, and that's all you can ask. That's a positive play. Nine and a half minutes left, third quarter. 16 zip Miami. And the second and six. Costa short. Jonathan Harris and Frank was put down just after he threw the football. This has been a very erratic afternoon for Frank Costa. Well, they're playing a zone defense and they're coming off the ball with that 4-3 defense where the defensive line is pushing the offensive line back and with that three-step drop, he's not getting any depth where he can see his receivers. And, and I think that's really caused him a lot of problems today. Third down and six. Costa out of the shotgun. Bennett at the bottom of your picture. Three wide outs to the top. Through the hands of Dietrich Clausel. Tough pass to handle. And some boos here at the Orange Bowl. Not happy with a stagnant hurricane offense here in the third period. Well, the folks came in here today expecting to see a blowout. And, you know, we're into the third quarter uh, midway. And they're only up 16 zip. And their quarterback, uh, Frank Costa, is struggling a little bit in some of his decision making. And uh, he's not throwing the ball well. So the fans are a little uh, unduly. Look out for number 85, Dexter Dawson. He's a fearless punt returner. This is the first Mike Chrissy punt of the day. And there you see Dawson not calling the fair catch and doing his Houdini impersonation. 36-yard punt, three-yard return. 9.05 to play in the third quarter. Georgia Southern looking to break out of the shutout. Of where we're at, the Orange Bowl. Beautiful city, Miami, Florida, right on Biscayne Bay. And as night falls in Miami, you ought to see this town light up. There's nothing more beautiful than the skyline of Miami, downtown Miami, as you come across the water. And here at the Orange Bowl, about 45,000 waiting for the Hurricanes to light some things up. They've been shut down on their first two possessions, third quarter. Georgia Southern trails at 16 zip, nine minutes left, third period. And the Eagles have a football, but a penalty marker down as Joe Dupre goes ready to pull the trigger. Well, Miami's doing what they'd like to do, and that's force Georgia Southern to throw the football. Football, full start, start. Offense. Offense. 
Looking for changes in the Miami defense. We spot one. Pat Riley in at a defensive tackle spot now, replacing Kenny Lopez. And there's Ryan Collins, the number two quarterback in the bullpen. Collins has not seen much playing time this season. I don't consider him a backup. He's a starter in waiting, a very capable young man. He's a young man that Dennis has a lot of confidence in and said that he would not be afraid to insert him at any time. Looks like we're going to see him next time. First down 15 for Georgia Southern at their own 43, and Dupree in a heap of trouble. Rohan Marley, the little man. He's like a little bug with a big sting. He'll really hurt you. Well, he's a little guy that just makes play after play, and you wonder, how can a guy this small, and you see him on the blitz again, running by the guard or the tackle, or Cushing, coming up with the uh, sack. Rohan Marley, the son of the legendary musician, Bob Marley. Second down, 18 for Georgia Southern now at their own 40. This is the fullback James Williams stumbled across to the 46. Carl Richardson made sure that Williams would get no farther. Six-yard pickup. Miami came into this ball game with a very sound defense to take away the option by assigning the defensive end and the tackle to the fullback and giving the linebacker the opportunity to read and flow to the football, and they've done a good job of executing that defense today. See what Georgia Southern comes with here on third and 13. Again, James Williams brought down by Carl Richardson. CJ knocked him at the 48. And Williams will be short of the first down. Picked up eight yards. It'll be fourth down and about six. Here you see what, what happens when you give the ball to the fullback and everybody's expecting the wide play of the pitch. There's a lot of room for the fullback. As you see, Lewis running out of there gets blocked off. And then C.J. Richardson having to come up and make the tackle to keep it from getting the first down. Richardson, a heavy hitter out of Dallas, Texas. Bill Thatcher on a line drive. Fair catch by Jonathan Harris at the Miami 14-yard line. Seven minutes, eight seconds to play here in the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. Miami leading it 16 to nothing, and Dennis Erickson has made a change at the quarterback spot. Ryan Collins, a talented sophomore from right here in Miami, went to Hialeah, Miami Lakes. He's just one for five on the year for 14 yards, but he brings another dimension to the Hurricane offense. Yeah, he has the maneuverability to get him get himself out of trouble. If you start to put pressure on him in the pocket, he's got four or five speed, and he'll come out of there and make something happen on his own. Looking forward to see what Ryan Collins does with his opportunity here. And he's looking to throw on first down. Thanks, Jonathan Harris completed the 35-yard line, spun out by Alton Hitson. A 20-yard pickup, and Collins shows you his maneuverability and his ability to throw on the run. Not only the ability to throw on the run, but the ability to square his shoulders up and make a good throw. Here you see him going back. He's sitting, waiting, and all of a sudden, protection break down. He has the speed to get outside the pocket, and as you saw, before he threw the football, he squared his shoulders up. Good execution by Ryan Collins. First down and 10 for Miami. They're on 34. Here comes Larry Jones. Nowhere to go. Fumble the football. Look at this. Alex Mash will go in for the touchdown. What can you say? Just another big play. And look, Georgia Southern prides themselves on the ability to come up with a big play defensively. And uh, that fumble leads to a touchdown. Second time, Larry Jones has put the football down on a fumble. You talk about costly. Alex Mash, as a freshman, had an interception run back for a touchdown in the 1990 1AA National Championship game for Tim Stowers. And here he picks one off the turf and takes it 28 yards for Georgia Southern's only touchdown today. That's Nick Davis down on his back, the outside linebacker. But what an unfortunate turnaround for Miami. They had momentum. Ryan Collins 
added a little energy to the offense. Next play, they turn it over, and it turns in the six points for the visitors. Well, that's a play where Larry Jones just tried to do too much. You know, you're you're in a position, you're surrounded. You know, you either go down or you just turn right up field instead of trying to turn around, reverse your field. And, you know, being a fullback, you've got to run over people. He's running more like a tailback at this point where he's trying to make too much happen once he gets the football. And this is, as you said earlier, the second fumble, and that leads to Alex Masters' 28-yard uh, run for a touchdown. Ought to be a very empty feeling for Larry Jones right now, but how about the athletic ability of Mr. Mash? Well, he showed great balance for a big man. You know, when we talked with Coach Starr yesterday, he talked about Alex's ability not only as a power guy, but a guy with good athleticism, and he showed it there. Well, Alex Mash, a marvel in the weight room. His coach calls him a freak of nature at the 1AA level. He squatted with 705 pounds on his back. They made him do it three times and did it without any trouble at all. Reed Haley on for the point after. He has been perfect in a dozen attempts. And he's now 13 of 13. Ella Hush has come over the Orange Bowl. A Miami turnover turns into a Georgia Southern touchdown. The Hurricanes' lead has been cut to 16-7. Here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, and the Hurricanes lead it 16-7. El Georgia Southern striking on the Alex Nash 28-yard runoff the fumble recovery. Don't forget our next telecast here on Sunshine Network. University of Miami football comes your way Sunday, October 31st. 10.30, tape delay. Ron Dickerson's Temple Owls visiting the Orange Bowl. The tangle with Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes. And I don't imagine that Dennis Erickson is feeling too good about things. Well, he's not really happy with uh, the way things are going right now. Offensively, they're not moving the football. They're not able to get it in the end zone. They have to sell the field goal. And then they give up a touchdown offensively. Jamie German spinning to the 24-yard line. A freshman from Fort Myers, Florida, drew a crowd. Maurice Reed, number 28, heading off the bottom of the pile. Along with Derek Austin. Well, another opportunity to look at Ryan Collins, number eight, the sophomore quarterback. Nat, it was not a hands-down decision for Dennis Erickson. The name Frank Costa, Collins, had an excellent preseason. Collins had an excellent preseason, but Frank Costa had been sitting, waiting, and doing all the right things and deserved a chance to start. But here's Ryan Collins' chance to uh, show that he should be the guy. Frank Costa did not have a good afternoon today. Here's Bennett on first down, and he is tripped up. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. If you can believe this, Georgia Southern off that tackle by Huey Hunt with momentum here at the Orange Bowl. 6.08 left, third quarter, and they're playing with spirit. Yeah, here you see them getting penetration, something they hadn't done all day, and as they are bringing Donnell Bennett down, able to trip him up in the backfield, but that's what happened when you come up with a big play defensively. It inspires you, and then everybody feels that they can win this ball game, and that's the danger of leaving a team like Georgia Southern in the ball game. Second down and 10, Ryan Collins has James Stewart as his lone setback. This is Clausell. Dietrich Clausell with a first down pick up to the 36-yard line. 12-yard gain, stop on the play. Dawson and William made by Darius Dawson, the outside linebacker. Second catch today for Clausell. Well, Clausell was just the outlet receiver, and Collins went back, looked downfield, saw that they were in a zone and had nowhere to throw the football, knew who his outlet was, came to Clausell, he picked up the first down. Well, Ryan Collins, he has a great feel for the game. Young man who exudes leadership. On first and ten, here's Collins, and passer run, freezes the linebackers, and scampers out after a 12-yard pickup first down. We talked about the added dimension evidence. We talked about his ability to run with the football. He came out with a pass run option, and he really had Chris Jones wide open, but Chris Jones was at a point where, why take the chance? He could run that ten yards as, as well as complete the pass. As you see him come out here, they fake the handoff, he comes out wide, Chris Jones is open in the left side of your screen, but he points to him. He said, Block, man, I, I could run it that far. I don't have to take a chance on throwing the ball and intercepting, getting it intercepted. Good selection. Here's Stewart squaring up. Boom! Inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line, leaving two Georgia Southern tacklers in his wake. Alt 
Stockton hits him, and Rob Stockton and the wrecking ball James Stewart does it again. Huge pickup. Here's a shot of Frank. He's a little disappointed in, in his performance today, but he knows that he's just a matter of going back next week, working hard, getting ready for the Florida State game. 14-yard pickup for James Stewart. He comes out. Donnell Bennett now the lone setback on first and 10. Bennett off left tackle. And the Hurricanes ripping in to that Georgia Southern defense with their run game again. That's an eight-yard gain for Donnell Bennett. We're down under four and a half minutes left, third quarter. That's what you call re-establishing the line of scrimmage. The offensive line has started to take charge, and they're pushing the Georgia Southern defense back and giving those backs rooms to cut and run with the football. And here you see Donnell Bennett running through a tackler, picking up uh, seven, eight yards for give them sec second and short. I'm getting so excited I can't get it out. <laughs> Terrell Green, Zeb Lemelski. Doing a nice job on the left side. Here's Stewart coming right and right in to Huey Hunt. But it takes some help to drop Stewart. This kid, uh, James Stewart, just has unbelievable leg drive. Uh, Hunt hit him square up, turned him, but he still was not able to bring him down by his lonesome. He had to get some help from the remainder of the uh, defenders. Going to be third down and three. James Stewart hit head on and still did not go down. Matt Moore, how about your thoughts on Dennis Erickson's choice to pull Costa and come with Collins? Well, I think this is an opportune time to find out what Ryan Collins can do under the heat before they go into a big ball game next week. You need to know what your second teamer can do. And uh, they always said that they really didn't believe he was the second team player. There you see Bennett just doing a good job of hard, tough running up the middle as Casey Jones, Tyrell Green, and uh, Rudy Barber does a good job of clearing some room for him to pick up the first down. First down for Bennett. Roderick Christopher, number 98. Paul Carroll, number 43, brought him down, but not before Bennett got the first down. All right, this is a collision where you see him just running over Paul Carroll. He eventually makes the stop, but not before the first down. Well, Donnell Bennett, former linebacker, and he plays the running back spot with a linebacker's mentality. Under three minutes left, third quarter, 16 to 7 Miami, and on first down, touchdown! Jonathan Harris from Ryan Collins. That's the ability of a Ryan Collins. You bring him out of the pocket, you get him out wide, away from the pursuit, and he's able to locate Harris running free in the corner of the end zone and get the ball to him before the defenders can react. Good execution, good play calling, good, good job by the receiver getting over, catching the football. Jonathan Harris, his first touchdown of the year, I think. Yes, sir, and the first touchdown pass in the career of Ryan Collins. Glad you saw it with us. Well, Ryan Collins doing just what you hoped he would. An energizer. Pruitt's point after right through the uprights. Well, just when it looked bleak for Miami, in comes Ryan Collins and the Hurricanes back in form. What do you think this will do for the uh, media here in Miami next week? Now that Collins has come in, uh, Costa was pulled, and, you know, he leads him down to a touchdown. If he continues to perform like this, I guess we'll have the questions about the two-headed quarterback situation again. Well, those that watched the preseason carefully knew that there was a chance for a quarterback controversy this year because Ryan Collins is that good. Now there's some more fuel for the fire. We'll see how it goes the rest of the afternoon for Collins. He's given the Canes a 23-7 to lead. Here we get another look at that uh, touchdown pass by Ryan Collins to Jonathan Harris as you see his maneuverability and speed as he gets outside and lobs the ball. Perfect strike to Jonathan Harris for the touchdown. And another look at it. It's worth looking at two or three times. He shows good poise of waiting till he squares up his shoulders before he throws the football. Now, a lot of young quarterbacks don't take the time to square up, and it's hard to complete that ball because you're throwing off balance. He does a good job of getting both shoulders turned to the line of scrimmage and getting something on the football. Ryan Callens, he played point guard at Hialeah Miami Lakes for their basketball team. This guy can run the show. 23-7, to seven, Miami on top off an eight-play, 76-yard drive. And officially, they're calling it a 27-yard touchdown toss. This is Scott Barnwell. Taken by an up-back for Georgia Southern. 
Terry Lester, who gets it across to the 32-yard line. 13-yard kickoff return for Terry Lester, a redshirt freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. Well, two big plays here in the third quarter. The Larry Jones fumble picked up by Alex Mash and run in 28 yards for Georgia Southern's only touchdown. And then what happens to Tim Stowers Club? Well, Dennis Erickson makes a change, comes with Ryan Collins, and he engineers the 76-yard touchdown drive. 244 left third quarter. This is Joe Dupree, the Georgia Southern quarterback who's gone all the way. Shafton Fraley. That play has worked repeatedly for Georgia Southern. Fraley gains seven to the 40-yard line. It works for two reasons. One, Dupree does a good job of reading the, the defensive end, whether he pulls the ball out or, or gives it to the fullback, but more so the good blocking by the, the slot back as well as the split receiver. You don't see anyone in the pitcher Offside. until he's gained seven, eight yards. Second down. An offsides penalty by Miami decline. Second down, three for Georgia Southern. Looking at the Miami defense. Carlos Jones in at the left corner. Malcolm Pearson in at safety along with Earl Little. Paul White still the other cornerback. Dupree going deep as Darren Willis makes the catch at the 15-yard line. Great looking throw and catch. The two high school teammates from Macon, Georgia hook up for a 45-yard game. That's the identical play that they hit last week versus uh, Tennessee Chattanooga, where the back, the slot back starts in motion, then comes back, and he's out at flare control, and the safety, Little, did not read it, and Paul White was left out there on the island trying to cover two men. Good throw and catch by Dupree and uh, Willis. Nice tight spiral. Yeah, this game has been far more entertaining than one would have imagined coming in. Georgia Southern, one of the powerhouses in the one double-A level. And they've acquitted themselves admirably here at the Orange Bowl. Two and a quarter left in the third. Dupree in a heap of trouble. Evan Patrick and Darren Crime, the bookends, smothering Dupree. Every time Miami needs a big defensive play, you see the two defensive ends, Crime and Patrick, the leaders of the defense, as they come across, and as you see Dupree coming down the line of scrimmage, Kevin Patrick comes across, stops him, and in comes Darren Prime to finish him off. Kevin Patrick, one of the most experienced defenders at Miami today, his 22nd start of the Hurricanes. Loss of four, second and 14 at the Hurricane 20. Here's the end of the round at Dexter Dawson. It went for a 67-yard touchdown last week. It goes for another loss thanks to number 86, Kevin Patrick. There you see why he is the leader of the defense. He was getting ready to trail the quarterback, and he saw that reverse coming, and he was able to trip up Dexter Dawson. As we look back at the instant replay, here you see it's a well-set-up play, but Kevin Patrick is right there to snuff it out. An example of why coaches and players spend so much time watching film. Had a play that worked for a touchdown last week at Tennessee. Chattanooga looked very familiar to Kevin Patrick in the Hurricane defense. Georgia Southern, one out of eight on third down. And here it's third and 19. Blitz coming. Dupree gets it away. Incomplete. Kevin Patrick and Quan Russell supplying the pressure on Joe Dupree. Joe Dupree just showed a lot of uh, strength, especially arm strength, to get rid of that football to keep from giving up a 15, 20-yard sack. As we go back and we look at the instant replay, you see him coming out on the rollout, and he gets some pressure, and up comes uh, Russell, and he gets rid of the football. He saves his team 25, 30 yard, an easier field goal attempt. Reed Haley missed from 53 earlier. This will come from 41. And blocked again. Second time today, the Hurricanes have got a hand on a Reed Haley field goal try. So Miami will take the football back. First down and 10 at the 34-yard line. And the Hurricanes get a roar from the home crowd with 44 seconds left, third quarter. They lead it 23 to 7. It'll be first and 10 for Miami at the 24. 
Let's take another look at this uh, field goal attempt. And as you see, Dexter Siegler comes around the corner, showing that 4-3 speed, and is able to block the, the kick. Second one today for the Hurricanes. Second series today for Ryan Collins as Miami's quarterback. Donnell Bennett, the lone setback. Bennett breaks a tackle and is brought down by Darius Dawson at the 28. Four-yard pickup for the junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Donnell Bennett, James Stewart. They've been a dynamite one-two punch running the football all afternoon for Miami. C. Tellison, Jonathan Harris come to the bottom of your picture. Chris Jones, flank to the top. This is Stewart. James Stewart shed a tackle or two, got up to the 28-yard line. Actually, the 33-yard line, a pickup of three yards. Yeah, that'll do it. End of three quarters here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. We've had our share of excitement. We'll turn the page to the Orange Bowl right after this. Fourth quarter, Miami in front, 23-7. Let's go downstairs. Joe Rose has company. Thank you very much, Eric. And now, what a game we have. And speaking of a guy that knows about having good games, I'm with Michael Barrell, the former middle linebacker of the Miami Hurricanes, now making the big dollars with the Houston Oilers. Has a week off. What do you think of this whole thing, Mike? Great to be back? Oh, yeah, it's great to be back. I mean, you feel a drilling and coming through the Orange Bowl. I wanted to come out a little early and run through the smoke, but uh, I missed that. But it feels great to be home. The big difference besides the money, obviously, with Houston and, and, and playing back here at the Orange Bowl and watching these guys play again. It's a whole different different atmosphere. I mean, the crowd is a whole lot different. I mean, in Houston, they quickly boo you. You're making all that money. Boo! Boo, because you're entertainment. But here, I mean, people come out because they're diehard fans. The guys are really putting forth the effort. I mean, you see, they playing Georgia Southern. They're a little flat because I think they worry about Florida State, but that's nothing to fear. I mean, they're trying to do the job. All right, Mike. Thanks a lot for being with us. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. Go back up to you guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Michael Barrow. Great linebacker at Miami was Michael Barrow. On third down, and a yard. Collins keeps it and has a Miami first down. Now Michael Barrow out of Homestead, Florida. He was sort of the mentor for James Burgess, who is a freshman linebacker at Miami this year. But Michael Barrow, that it came up through the ranks, a four-year performer here at Miami. A great linebacker for the University of Miami, but was able to go right into Houston as a second-round draft choice and become a starter. So that just goes to show you what kind of talent that uh, Michael Barrow possesses. Well, all three Hurricane linebackers from a year ago in the NFL. Barrow, Jesse Armstead, and Darren Smith. And a guy that someday will be in the National Football League, James Stewart rumbles for about eight more yards around left end. Up down by Lee Brooks, a redshirt freshman defensive end wearing number 44. What an afternoon it has been for James Stewart. Well, he's running with reckless abandon and he's doing a, a good job of deciding where he's gonna cut and, and reading the block of the guys out front for him that he's able to pick up that extra three, four yards. Unofficially, 12 carries, 74 yards for James Stewart. Had 74 yards in seven carries at Colorado last weekend. Second and three. This is Derek Harris, former linebacker out of Willow Ridge, Texas, dragging a tackler or two for another first down up to the Miami 46-yard line. Well, early on, it was the Dane Pruitt show. Three field goals. Ryan Collins came on in this third in the third quarter. Took Miami on a scoring drive, and he went three for three, including the 27-yard strike to Jonathan Harris. Only touchdown for Georgia Southern on a fumble recovery by Alex Mash. Ryan Collins out of the shotgun on first and ten. Complete to Bennett. And Bennett picks up another Miami first down in the Georgia Southern territory at the 42-yard line. 13-yard game. Ryan Collins is just showing a, a great presence back there in the pocket knowing where he wants to go with the football and getting a lot of zip on it. As you see, he goes to Donnell Bennett, who breaks the tackle, gets up field for an extra 10 yards. The lights are on here at the Orange Bowl. Ryan Collins is on as well. Just underway, fourth period. Here's Collins looking to improv 
do delivers the mail to Jonathan Harris. And Harris gets the first down, picks up 10 yards, and picks up a penalty flag as well. Maybe a face mask as Dominic Turner, number 48, reached out and tried to bring Harris down. And it is a face mask against Georgia Southern. But how about the ability to impromptu by Collins? Throws the linebackers with that little jab step and fired another strike. The thing that you have to be impressed with with Collins is that once he starts face to scramble. Five-yard penalty on the defense. First down. Once he starts to scramble, he doesn't lose presence downfield, and he's able to still pick out his receiver and get the ball to him. Most young quarterbacks, when they start to scramble, they're looking to run with the football, as we see him here. Stop, get the ball to Jonathan Harris, who picks up a big gain as well as a penalty. Sean Austin, number 18, the man guilty of pulling the face mask of Jonathan Harris, who has had his best day this season. Here comes Derek Harris, another guy that moves the pile. Down to the 21-yard line, a five-yard rumble for Derek Harris. Morris makes the stop for the Eagles. You know, ironically, we haven't called Alex Mash number a lot today, and in talking with the coaching staff prior to the ball game, they felt the way they could neutralize him was run right at him, and that seems to be what they're doing because the guards are having a great day today. Earlier it was Terrell Green working on Mash. Now it's Alan Simonette. Here's Bennett on second down and five, and Donnell crashes inside the 20, down near the 16-yard line and close to another Hurricane first down. I think that uh, this running game of the Hurricanes is really starting to wear down the Georgia Southern football team. And as you see, they're moving a little bit slower. And ironically, even though they're interchanging quite a bit, they don't seem to have the stamina to go with this, uh, or go against this Hurricane fo offensive football team. Third down and one for Miami. At the Georgia Southern 17. Stewart brought down in the backfield by Lee Brooks. That'll be short of the first down and a loss of three yards. Standout play of a 220-pounder out of Moultrie, Georgia, Lee Brooks. Lee Brooks did a good job of beating Deb Lemelski at the snap. He was on a blitz, I think, and was able to get in the backfield and hit James Stewart before he got started. Well, this ought to be interesting. Fourth down, three to go, and Dennis Erickson says, go indeed. 20 remaining in the football game. Miami ahead 23 to 7. And Collins in some trouble. Going for the end zone. And Chris Jones. Touchdown! Touchdown Miami! An unbelievable play. Ryan Collins has just got so much ability to avoid the sack and buy to be able to throw that football moving to his right all the way back across the field reminds you a lot of John Elway with the strong arm. An incredible play on fourth down and four. Ian Collins on the run through a strike to Chris Jones. 41-yard touchdown. Two touchdown passes for Ryan Collins relieving an ineffective Frank Costa today. And you wonder if this is just the start of the Ryan Collins story at Miami. Injured Georgia Southern football player down. And that is Sean Austin, the cornerback out of Thomasville, Georgia. 29-7 Miami thanks to this man. Well, here we look at a replay of uh, Ryan Collins, and he shows you his ability to maneuver and stay away from the sack as he changes direction, and then he moves out farther and then sets his feet and throws back with a perfect throw to Chris Jones for the touchdown. Collins had to throw it across the field on the run, pressure bearing down on him. And he still fired a perfect strike to Chris Jones. Well, as I said earlier, there's only one quarterback I know that can do that or have done it consistently, and that's John Elway. And he reminds you a lot of John Elway with his ability to get out of trouble and still look down the field and find his open receiver. Sean Austin going out of the game. Dane Pruitt set to nail up the point after touchdown for Miami.
minutes, eight seconds left in the football game here at the Orange Bowl. It's now the Hurricanes 30 and the Eagles of Georgia 7-7. Seven, seven. Group pass for fun. Call the Hurricane group sales office to arrange the schedule. To seven. And for all you college football fans, there are still plenty of single game tickets for remaining Hurricane home games. For ticket information, call 800 Go Cans. Now for the Miami Hurricanes, an 11 play, 76 yard drive. Ryan Collins throwing a 19 yard touchdown pass to Chris Jones. And look at the numbers for Collins. That's perfect. If you ever want to write a script for a young man coming in to lead his team to victory, this is it. Six for six, 102 yards, two touchdowns. That's perfect. Wonder what the thoughts that are running through Dennis Erickson's mind right now. Got Barnwell has it teed up at the 35. Marlo Wortham, fastest man wearing the Georgia Southern uniform back at the goal line. This is Wortham from the one. And only marker down. And Marvo Wortham showing off some of his 4-4 speed. Running at 43 yards up to the 44-yard line. Eric, Georgia Southern has had some good uh, kickoff returns uh, this game, and you know, they just do a good job of running the wedge protection where they start up field and they break it right or left. Holding, going to return, a 10-yard penalty from the foul. And uh, that gives them good execution to get outside, and maybe some of the holding also helps, but uh, they do a good job of executing the wedge uh, kickoff return. Well, for Miami, the story in the first half, the running of James Stewart and Donnell Bennett. They both have 74 yards rushing today. But in the third quarter, it's been Ryan Collins. Six for six, couple of touchdown passes. 27 yards to Jonathan Harris. And across the green, 19 yards to Chris Jones. As Frank Costa watches from the Miami bench. First and 10, Georgia Southern, their own 14. This is Chris Wright. Has some room. And rope down at the 33. Right on the carry. Juan Russell, the outside linebacker, with help from Carlos Jones. But a significant pickup for Chris Wright. When you've got excellent blockers at the uh, slot back position, this flex bone is really tough to defend because the slot back does a good job of getting the defender, the safety, on the ground, as you see, Shaft and Haley come down and he cuts number 27, which is uh, Antonio Coley, and that gives him plenty of room to run for right. It was an 18-yard gain and is first and 10 at their 32. Dupree looking deep for Willis, won't have time for Rocka Short, brought him down with a sack. That was an excellent individual effort by Rocka Short where he went back. As Dupree started to throw the football, he jumped up, the block it came down, and, and as he pulled it back, was able to keep composure and come down with the sack. As you look at it here again, Dupree gets a good drop. Short drives the fullback back into the quarterback and comes down and sacks the quarterback. Excellent individual effort. Here's another shot at it. Baraka Short running right over the top of James Williams. Loss of eight, second down 18. Here's right again. Gets an excellent block on the corner and is finally stopped by Antonio Coley. He picked the 18 yards right back up. They just do an excellent job of cutting the defenders down. They, get, you know, a lot of times when a guy stands up, especially a receiver, and he's chicken fighting, as you, as you look at the replay here, they're coming out to the left. Here's the pitch. You see one guy down, two guys down, and that gives the, the running back plenty of room to run. A lot of times, young receivers have a tendency to stand up and chicken fight, and it's hard for the back to decide which way he's going to go. When they're on the ground, there's no decision. Easier to run. You played wide receiver for a number of years. Blocking, an important part of that position. Very important part because you want everybody to do the same for you when your number is called. From the Georgia Southern 43, first down and 10. Dupree brought down by Kenny Holmes. Kenny Holmes, who had 22 sacks his senior year at Vero Beach High School, gets his first sack as a Hurricane. That was, you know, we're talking about young guys that are hungry. They're happy to, get in, happy to get into the ball game, and he just goes right over the tackle, Stacey, 
Moses and comes down with a big sack here. Dupree never saw him coming. A home run shot for Kenny Holmes. Loss of six, second and 16. Nine and a half minutes left in this game, a 30 to seven lead for Miami. This is Chris Wright with James Williams in front of him. Malcolm Pearson jumping on the back of Wright, riding him out of bounds at the 43. Picked up the six yards they had just lost. Brings up third down and 10. That's just a tough play to, to stop. And, you know, when we were talking with Coach Starr yesterday, and uh, you mentioned it earlier, he said the only thing that Coach Russell told him in the end was keep it simple, stupid. And they just run this play over and over and over again, and they do a fine job of executing, and pretty soon they pop the big one. The only thing that I think that have been able to keep them from doing it today is Miami has just as much speed. Georgia Southern has only had football back for 12 years, but there's a lot of flavor and tradition to their program. We'll tell you more about it before this game is in the books. Third down and 10. And Kenny Holmes smothers Dupree again. Well, this is a bit of a coming out party for Kenny Holmes, the red shirt freshman, one of the seven players ejected from last week's game. Well, last week we uh, talked to, <clears throat> we talked about uh, last week where they were running the ball very well, running into the boundary, and here you see Kenny Holmes they're starting to figure out how Georgia Southern wants to run this ball, and they're just getting upfield and not giving the quarterback a chance to get outside the pocket. And the punter, Bill Thatcher, in trouble. Great job to get it away. I mean, that's a great job by Bill Thatcher. Rolls out of bounds at the eight-yard line. So Thatcher averts disaster and unloads a 51-yard punt. 8.29 left here at the Orange Bowl, the Canes by 23. again and let's watch Ryan Collins run the offense again here's James Stewart and he gets to the 14 yard line pickup of six down to the Orange Bowl field with Joe Rose thank you very much Eric and that I, first of all Dennis Erickson's done what he wanted to he's accomplished in the fourth quarter allowing everybody to get in the ball game and play the bad news is now does this stir up controversy between Ryan Collins and Frank Costa for next week or games to come. That remains to be seen. Back up to you guys. Well, just the start, thanks, Joe, of a very interesting quarterback situation. Paul Carroll, a real warrior for this Georgia Southern team with help. Goes off, but uh, this is the start of what's going to be a firestorm of publicity as we look at how Carroll went down. He gets his leg caught up underneath as he, as he brings James Stewart down, and uh, hopefully uh, he's going to be okay. He's just uh, hobbling off. And he's walking on his own now, so hopefully that's a good sign. Second down and five for Miami. They have it at their own 13. Ryan Collins in relief of Frank Costa. Six for six, 108 yards, two touchdowns, and tons of excitement. Here's Stewart again. Stewart a yard short of the first down up at the 17-yard line. They're brought down by Huey Hunt and Dominic Turner. You know, last week against Colorado, the bench-clearing brawl, seven Hurricanes ejected. Dennis Erickson said, we're going to take it in-house. He came up with these guidelines for the Hurricane program when it comes to fighting. These very same guidelines, Nat Moore, might well be taken on by the NCAA. Well, something have to be done. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to control your football team, and there's got to be some type of suspension that will keep the players from running out, getting involved in this types of, of uh, events or affairs that, you know, really um, make your team look bad. You're talking about a University of Miami football team that on the field, they're one of the greatest there is, but some of the antics is what has hurt their uh, national promise across the country. And last week, a bad one around college football. Wasn't just a Miami-Colorado brawl. There were at least two others around the country. On third, the yard, James Stewart cutting back, picks up the first down, picks up some new friends, including number 37, Huey Hunt, who has become well acquainted with the eight-wheel truck named James Stewart. I think quite a few of these Georgia Southern uh, defenders will have nightmares tonight about James Stewart. Uh, they're trying to figure out what they have to do to get him down. He does a good job of following his blockers. Then he sees there's nothing there. He cuts back and watch him just run through Hunt and just drags him for another two, three yards. Good leg strength. This is the best day that James Stewart has ever had. 
Ryan Collins sacked for the first time today. Back at the 20, that's a three-yard loss. Number 91, Michael Morris, I believe, the first to get there. Three-yard loss, second to hand. By the way, James Stewart's numbers, unofficial. 17 carries, 93 yards. Here you see, uh, as Collins goes back to pass, there's a free blitzer coming, and he does a good job of stepping up, and they hem the, hemmed him in, but he showed presence of mind of not just throwing the football. He took the sack. Hurricanes have substituted on that offensive line. Omar Andrews and Jason Boudroni on the left side. Casey Jones still at center. Ryan Collins checking off line of scrimmage on second and 13. Looking deep. Wimberly out there, can't make the catch. Covered well by Brandon Roselle. That was a well-thrown football, but good coverage by Roselle. And, you know, you keep talking about this kid, Collins, and he's showing you that he has all of the attributes to be a good quarterback here at the UM. And, you know, he's been patient for the last two, uh, three ball games, sat on the bench, and now it's his time, and he's showing the quarterback that he has all of the ability to one day lead this Hurricane football team. Only question is, what day will that be? <laughs> Only Dennis knows that. Ryan Collins being chased on third and 13. On the run, fires incomplete. Gerard Daphnis reached back, try to pull it in. After hitting his first six, Ryan Collins has missed on his last two. 5.52 remaining fourth quarter. Game not in doubt. It's 30-7 to Miami. This is a real screwy play here. I, I think most of the guys on the offensive line missed the snap count. But then once again, Ryan Collins shows you his ability to avoid bad plays and get his team out of a bad situation. Ryan Collins' ability to throw the football. Turn the corner with it. Reminds you a little bit of the guy Miami will see next weekend. That's Dexter Dawson still on his feet and finally tripped up at the 40-yard line. And penalty markers littering the Orange Bowl field. 36-yard punt, 14-yard return, and we'll have to sort it out for you. Of course, the player I thought that Ryan Collins reminds you of a little bit is Charlie Ward, the quarterback at Florida State. Well, Charlie Ward uh, is leading the Heisman race at this point, and, uh, you know, he's a guy that Miami will have to contend with next week, but, you know, they've got a guy that has those kind of abilities. Illegal block in the back above the waist during the return. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We have a timeout here at the Orange Bowl. Light falling, and so is another hurricane opponent. At the Orange Bowl, 539 left in the game. Hurricanes leading 30 to 7. Eric Reed alongside Nat Moore, Joe Rose down on the field. In the truck, our producer Jeff DeMoss. Today's game directed by John Liu, our associate director upstairs with us. Michelle Willie, Jeff McCain doing our stats today, and our spotter is Steve LeBeau. Georgia Southern's going to come with a new quarterback here. Charles Bostic, number seven. Guy that has started 17 games in his career at Georgia Southern. He's from Thomasville, Georgia. And uh, a guy that has run the option, they tell us, since the eighth grade. According to Coach Starr, he's a clone of uh, Joe Dupree, and uh, it was really tough for them to make a decision on who's going to be the starting quarterback because of this guy's ability. And penalty flags will stop this play. Good ball, full start. Offense. Well, this is a Georgia Southern program that started from scratch 12 years ago. They had a layoff of 40 years of football, and then Irk Russell left Georgia as the defensive coordinator. He was there for 17 years. He came to Statesboro to start a program from scratch in 1981. They were a club team for the first three years. Then they went 1AA in 1984, and they won the first of four national championships just one year later. And the amazing thing, at Irk Russell's press conference, they had to go to a Kmart in downtown Statesboro to buy a football. They didn't even own one. The original football office was located in a trailer park. First down and 15 for Georgia Southern. This is Shafton Fraley. And he is brought down by Earl Little and Marcus Carey. 
Gets up to the 38-yard line, pick up of five. Back downstairs to Joe. Thank you guys very much. I'm with a guy that's been a big part of this Miami defense for a long time right now, Rusty Medeiros. Rusty, I want to ask you, first of all, I let everybody know you've taken the year off, decided on your own not to play because of the, deep, uh, the knee. What are you going to do? What's the plans for the future for now? Well, I'm going to continue to work and progress with my knee. Uh, one thing about an injury like this is one thing you can't control is time. And time's been a, a, a big help for me because I tried to push it and get back on the field really quick. And, and I just wasn't ready, and I made that decision this fall. So I'm still continuing to, to get back and play this year and, and hopefully, or next year, and hopefully get back into the swing. Rusty, I really enjoyed talking to you before about how important the academic side of this whole thing is now, and maybe you can help a lot of others out there trying to make this decision of a future in the academics for something else besides football. Well, I've got to control what I have right now, and my education is very important to me, and, and uh, you know, it always has been. And when football became secondary to that, I really wanted to put full effort into it, just like I would uh, run around the corner trying to catch a quarterback. So. I'm doing that right now. I'm creating some options for me in case football doesn't work out. And uh, that's my plan, and, and I'm going at it full force. All right, Rusty, good luck to you, and I uh, hope we see you out here maybe next year. Thanks a lot. All right, back up to you guys. Thanks very much, Joe. Rusty Medeiros, outstanding football player here at Miami. Devastating knee injury a year ago. Third down, 10. 4.46 left in the ball game. Bostic trying to sprint away from trouble. First down. Sliding into the Miami 45-yard line. 17-yard gain for Charles Bostic. Bostic is a kid that uh, has a lot of speed, and I'm almost uh, of the notion that that was really a draw from the inception because he went back, set up, and then he came right out of the pocket. There was no indecision on his part as if he never really was intending to throw the ball downfield, but a big run by the junior quarterback, uh, Bostic. And Bostic, another of the talented group of players from a little town in Georgia named Thomasville. Tim Stowers, the head coach at Georgia Southern, his eyes lit up like 100 watt bulls when he mentioned Thomasville, Georgia. He's got a whole group of guys from Thomasville. We'll be right back. In Miami, the Hurricanes leading by 23 points. And perhaps looking ahead now to next weekend where they'll meet another player from Thomasville, Georgia. Charlie Ward is from Thomasville as well. And the big one next Saturday when the Hurricanes go up against the number one team in the land. Miami has won three straight against the Seminoles. Seven of the last eight. Last year they won by three here. Two years ago in Tallahassee a 17-16 Miami win. The Canes 8-0 when they meet the preseason number one. That should be a real war next Saturday in Tallahassee. Charles Bostic on first and ten. Gets brought down by Kenny Holmes. Twan Russell jumped on just for help. Pick up of one to the 45-yard line. Four minutes left. Well, again, talking about the talent out of Thomasville, Georgia. Small town, two high schools, and incredible football talent comes out of Thomasville year after year. Well, as you look at the, the graphics here, you see that there are quite a few guys that have come out of there, as well as Charlie Ward of Florida State. And uh, in talking with Coach Starr, he said, something in the water, that any time you start to recruit uh, Thomasville football players, uh, and that's Thomasville, Georgia, you're going to find some good ones. That's similar to Dade County, matter of fact. Carlos Jones on the that was Cherry Lester that ran around right end until Carlos Jones tripped him up. A Pick up of five to the 41, brings up a third and five. There we see that uh, flex bone, the option once again, and each and every time they're able to get that running back on the corner with the first guy, the first defender, down on the ground. And... They just do a good job of executing, but Miami just have too much speed running lateral. Under three minutes to play. Miami leads it by 23. Third down and five, and nowhere to go for Charles Bostic, except down. Kenny Holmes, Antonio Coley, Baraka Short, and Juan Russell. Bostic is back on the backfield. Miami had a blitz on that time, and they had folks in every gap. And uh, as we go back and we look at the... Uh, 
the highlights or the instant replay, you see that Holmes is there before he can uh, even start to get outside. And you're talking about uh, Miami trying to make sure that no one scores on the defense. The one touchdown that was given up, it was given up by the offense, so the defense is still looking to shut them out. Well, Georgia Southern calls timeout. 2.27 left in the game. You mentioned something in the water in Thomasville, Georgia. We don't know about that, but we know there is something in the water in Statesboro, Georgia. Tim Stowers, the head coach, told us the story yesterday about beautiful Eagle Creek. It's nothing more than an old drainage ditch behind the practice field. We'll tell you a little bit about it when we get back to the Orange Bowl right after this timeout on Sunshine Network. Creed here at the Orange Bowl where the Canes are trying to put the finishing touches on their fourth win and four starts. Georgia Southern going to drop to three and two, and Charles Bostic is dropped by Quan Russell on fourth down and seven. So the Hurricane defense wrapping up a strong effort. Only touchdown for Georgia Southern today. Game on a fumble recovery and a 28-yard run off of that recovery by Alex Marsh. Dave Olmstead, our executive producer here for Sunshine Network. Today's game produced by Jeff DeMoss. John Liu, our director. Charlie Stenberg, our technical director. Great job in the truck by our entire Sunshine Network crew. Well, Eric Russell, who began the program at Georgia Southern, one of his pet sayings was this, if you don't have the best of everything, make the best of everything you have, which brings us back to beautiful Eagle Creek. It is nothing more than an old drainage ditch behind the practice field at Georgia Southern. But Eric Russell, the founding father of Georgia Southern football, called it beautiful Eagle Creek. Now, the water in that creek, complete with the floating empty beer cans, is considered, at least in Statesboro, to have magical, mystical qualities. Now, the water from Eagle Creek is bottled and taken on the road for all their big games. They brought some of that Eagle Creek water with them today. They sprinkled it on the turf of the Orange Bowl at practice Friday afternoon. Uh, did not appear to get the job done for it. Someone forgot to tell the University of Miami that it was supposed to work. Uh, you're talking about uh, a good football team, though. When you talk about Georgia Southern, they, they've got a fine, a fine young football team for a 1AA, and they have nothing to be ashamed of today because they came in and they played a University of Miami football team as tough as anybody else this year. The only markers fly again. Good ball. Good ball. Full start. Full start. Offense. Offense. By the way, if you're wondering how they transport that Eagle Creek water, it must be done in an empty milk cart. I just want to know, what happens if one of the players is not aware and thinks that's milk? Mm. Not a pretty picture you've just Can't had. be a pretty picture. <laughs> Some of the flavor of Georgia Southern football. Allens gives it off to James Stewart, and... Stewart should be over the 100-yard mark now. This has been a banner day for the sophomore fullback, James Stewart. Sophomore James Stewart has ran hard all day, and uh, he deserves to be one of the top players. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him as the Big East Player of the Week, uh, as tough as he's ran. But he might be overshadowed by Ryan Collins and what he was able to get accomplished today, coming in and leading Miami to two touchdowns. Well, Miami was leading at 16-7. Their offense was ineffective. Frank Costa was having a poor day, and that's when Dennis Erickson tabbed Ryan Collins to go into the game, and he turned this particular game around when he went six for his first six, including a couple of touchdown throws. What does this do to this football team now? Does Dennis Erickson have a decision to make on his starting quarterback for next Saturday? I think Dennis has a decision to make, but it's, a, it's the kind of decision that you enjoy because you've got two quality quarterbacks. You know, Frank Costa is coming off a great game last week in Colorado, had his problems today. Uh, Ryan Collins comes in and plays well, but it's a decision where you know that if one guy goes down, you've got a quality backup, so... Either way, it's a plus for him. On third and three, Stewart brought down nicely by number 37, Huey Hunt. I that will be close to a first down. I believe Huey Hunt finally got the message that you do not tackle James Stewart high as he got down around his legs and, and grabbed him by the feet and brought him down instead of trying to muscle up with him. 
Fourth down, less than a yard. Here are the numbers unofficially on James Stewart. 19 carries, 104 yards. Thirty seconds to play. Derek Harris, no problems picking up the first down. Dominic Turner, number 48. Huey Hunt, number 37. On the stop of Harris, that could be our final play. The Georgia Southern will fall to three and two. Miami goes to four and zero. Oh. Their 31st consecutive regular season win. Their 53rd in a row here at the Orange Bowl. James Stewart, 19 carries, 104 yards. He'll share the postgame spotlight with Ryan Collins as the Hurricanes ring up another W here at the Orange Bowl. Today, the University of Miami Hurricanes, 30, Georgia Southern Eagles, 7. So Miami wins it by 23. And just as you would have hoped, if you were a Hurricane fan, Florida State, Miami, a pair of unbeatens now just a week away. Well, Dennis has got to be pretty happy, uh, except for the the disappointment in Frank's uh, Costa's play today. He was able to play a lot of guys. He was able to come out and keep everybody relatively healthy. No one got hurt, and uh, and get ready for next week. You talk about coming off a big victory at Colorado, Florida State in a week, and it, it could be tough, but you have to give uh, Dennis a lot of credit of getting his team up, getting them ready to play against Georgia Southern, and not overlooking this football team. How impressed were you? We both were well acquainted with Ryan Collins' skills and abilities. He comes off the bench ice cold and goes red hot, hits his first six, two for touchdowns, and turned this game Miami's way. Well, I was highly impressed with the kid because the first three ball games, if he got to play at all, it was mop up. And here was an opportunity where the team needed him. He came in, he got the job done, and was almost flawless in his execution and his ability to, to make things happen and help his ball club win. So you have to be impressed. Well, Joe Rose is downstairs. He's got Dennis Erickson with him. All right, guys, thank you very much. We do have Coach Dennis Erickson with us. Coach, this is one of those games, I'm sure. The good news is you get a chance to let everybody play. The bad news, maybe not the, the style of play you wanted to see today. Well, we didn't play very well. We uh, uh, played good on defense and uh, struggled around a little bit offensively. We ran the football pretty well and uh, didn't play like we wanted. It's kind of what I expected, I guess. But uh, uh, we're just going to have to go on. We've got a big one, obviously, next week. Well, do you think the team looks ahead in a game? I mean, there's been hype already about the Florida State game, and, and it's got to be hard for not only for the players but for the coaching staff not to look ahead. Oh, well, there's no question about it. You can say what you want, but uh, now we did it a little bit. But that's no excuse. Those kids played hard from Georgia Southern, and, uh, you know, Ryan Collins came in and played well. We weren't getting anything going. I thought the running backs ran well, and defensively we made plays when we had to. So it's a good win. Now we got to go to the drawing board and see if, what, what we can do against those guys. Well, let me just wrap it up. Since you mentioned Ryan Collins' great performance today, you're going to be asked this all week long. Is there anything to it? Who will be your starter for next week? No, I mean, Frank's a starter. There's no question about it. And uh, the thing we'll do is, uh, you know, if things aren't going very well, I'm not afraid to put Ryan in. And uh, uh, he makes some things happen. But Frank's a guy. He had a bad day, and so we made a change. But he, he'll be the starter next week. Well, I'm going to take this thing away before you get carried away there. Good luck next week, Coach. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks very much, Joe Rose. Job well done. And the Hurricanes get the job done as well. A 23-point win. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. Less than artistically pleasing, but the Hurricanes get it done anyway and move to 4-0 by virtue of this 30-7 victory. And our Sunshine Network player of the game off the bench and right into your hearts, Ryan Collins. He goes 6 of 802 yards. Here's one of his two touchdown throws. He just did a fantastic job of scrambling around and finding the open receiver. And here he goes to Chris Jones for a big touchdown to put him up 30 to um, 7, I think it is. 30 to 7 at this point. Well, you need a big timer to come out of your bullpen sometimes to bail you out. That's just what Ryan Collins did for Miami today. He's our player of the game. The Hurricanes win it, and we'll come right back to the Orange Bowl right after this.
entertaining football game for us here on Sunshine Network this late afternoon and early evening. The Hurricanes dispatched Georgia Southern back to Statesboro with a 30-7 win. This was a close football game in the third quarter. Miami led it by the tally of 16-7. That's when Dennis Erickson tabbed uh, Ryan Collins to come in for an ineffective Frank Costa today. And Collins really helped turn this game around. Well, you had two real young guys come in. Um, Ryan Collins came in and did a phenomenal job throwing two touchdowns and leading his team back to victory, as well as uh, James Stewart, who was the third team running back until today, and uh, he just had a phenomenal game with 104 yards rushing. Best game ever for James Stewart. Now, the Hurricanes did come out of this game 4-0 and relatively injury-free through this game. They expect their three injured starters back on defense for next weekend at Florida State. And that Moore, how do you see that big showdown in Tallahassee next week? Well, Miami has always made a, a, a name for themselves of beating up on Heisman Trophy candidates, and uh, I would say Charlie Ward could be in for a rough afternoon because Miami is a sound football team that somehow or another usually come up with the answers when they play Florida State. That should be a thriller next Saturday, high noon in Tallahassee, top-ranked Florida State, number three, Miami. Downstairs one last time, Joe Rose's final comments. Thank you guys very much. Obviously not a very nice looking performance today to say the least, but they do get out injury free. They get a chance to watch Ryan Collins. Well, some people are going to say that's good news. Others are going to say it's bad. I think Dennis Erickson put a halt to it right off the bat and said, Frank Costa starts. Things don't go well. I come in with Ryan Collins. And I think that's the way he's wanted to do it from the first day on. So we'll wait. But the talk, of course, has been Florida State. It's been Florida State for more than two weeks now. Should be a great game. I'm going to take the Hurricanes. Why not? All right. Thanks, Joe. Joe Rose going out on the limb. Our